Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. My name is Mick Sanz. Welcome to the channel. So today, on uh, this improvised live stream, um, let's see. There's two things that I'm going to do. Um, the first half of the stream, we're going to talk a little bit of uh, <clears throat> of Evangelion, as always. And in the second half of the stream, I'm going to do a brief overview of what is going to be coming to the channel on the final part of the year. And of course, uh, because this is an improvised stream, I didn't prepare anything. <laughs> so, mm, how about... Uh, doing something that I wanted to do a tier list yay I welcome Feku Sean welcome to the stream so what I'm going to do let me turn this on. <clears throat> what I wanted to do is uh, is a video really about this and this basically doing a tier list on the, um, on the Evangelion characters in Rebuild. That's going to be it. Of course, it's only going to be the characters. It's not going to be the angels and, or the arcs or the ships and everything that... <clears throat> or the Evangelion units and all this stuff that people have been asking me about. Uh, so this segment of the stream, I'm going to turn it into a video that I'm going to publish either on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, we're going to talk about more about that later. Uh, Beastress, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Now you can add, uh, you can participate anytime you want. Uh, I have here all of the characters that appear on Reveal. Uh, I'm missing one, and that's uh, Yui Kari, but she doesn't have any lines and dialogue, so it's like she's not there. <laughs> uh, and actually, I'm going to put here an F. So from S to F, right? Some of these characters make a comeback to the reveal storyline because uh, some of them appear on the Genesis Evangelion. And... Um, you might say, well, it's unfair because you will be comparing them to their counterparts in Neon Genesis Evangelion. And to that I say, life is tough. <laughs> That's how it is. <laughs> so a character, for example, like Murray, doesn't have a comparison in Neon Genesis Evangelion. But a character like Misato does. So those things are going to influence on my tier list. Now, this is my list. I'm going to give you my opinion on all of the characters. All right. Again, your opinions are welcome. You can participate in the chat anytime you want. If you are watching this later, you can leave your comments in the comment section. Uh, Bistro says, um, discovered your channel. Wait. Where? Where's my chat? Chat away there is actually that wait, wait my chat is not showing wait a sec. okay let's try again bistro says discovered your channel there is actually not that much english eva content cheers well thank you very much Bistrus, and that was the idea. When I started to cover Evangelion in my channel, I wanted to do something for the English-speaking uh, community. Uh, there's a ton in, in Spanish, and of course a ton in Japanese, but there's there's a there's lacking on English content, and. Um, and I understand that because in, in Latin America, Spain and Western Europe, as well in Asia, um, Evangelium is a big, big, big brand. But in America, it took, it took its, its time. It wasn't until Netflix came along that really, really, really expanded. Right? 
So I do plan to cover more Evangelion in the future. You might want to stick for that. So let's start because let's see. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's about time and uh, I don't have a lot of time today. So it's not going to be as long as previous stream, this stream. It's going to be short. So let's uh, let's uh, summarize again what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a tier list on the Evangelion characters that appear on Revealed. And I'm going to give you my opinion on each one of them. And those that appear on Neon Genesis Evangelion before, uh, I'm going to take that into account. Uh, you might think that it's unfair, but uh, it is how it is. All right, everybody's doing it, so do I. So we're gonna start from uh, Wiley personnel, right? And forget me if I get the names wrong, but let's start with the three uh, that have less screen time, and those are Sumiri, Taha, Takao, and um, I think it's Hideki Tama. So for me, all of these characters are okay. these three. And the reason is that they have cool design, and it seems that they were introduced to do something more than what they did. They had a reduced screen time, uh, she, at some point in 3 plus 1, seems like uh, when she was boarding the vessel, the, the escape pod, that she wanted to stay, showing some personality there. Uh, she wanted to stay on the ship, right, with Misato. Uh, that didn't happen. And he, on Reveal Q specifically, uh, talks about Kaji. That is the only time that Kaji is mentioned in the third movie. And it's Takao who, who mentioned him. This dude is completely irrelevant. <laughs> so the three of them look cool. I would want to watch them if we get that uh, time skip movie. Probably they will have a, a more relevant role. But they didn't do anything. And their participation was just to fill the background, to tell you the truth. <laughs> well, Sean, uh, that that kind of tier list, I'm not into it, <laughs> so I cannot. Uh, I I don't think that I'm going to do a, a tier list like that. Uh, at least not uh, in the foreseeable future. Let's say. Uh, and the Evangelion is. I understand what you're saying. Because Evangelion, uh, a big part of the fandom consider Evangelion to be a very uh, feminist story, right? Because it has to do more with uh, female roles and mothers than it has to be with male roles and fathers, right? So I do understand what you're saying, but I don't, I don't, I don't see the story like that. It's completely respectable that people that see it like that. Uh, then we have Midori. Now, Midori gets an extra tier because she has a relevant role on the final movie. Right? Uh, she wanted to... She was uh, uncomfortable with the children in the ship. She... The, the way that in English is translated, it seems that she only has issues with Shinji. Is not. She actually has issues with Shinji, Asuka, and Mari. The three of them. She don't like any of them. She shows a little bit more um, tolerance with Asuka. But she really hates Shinji. And her role in the third act of the last film uh, is what sparks, that we're going to talk about Sakura later, uh, her actions, right? 
And she has like a, a very interesting lines with Ritzko when they are trying to forge the, the spear of Gaius, right? When she sees uh, the Evangelion imaginary through the window and all that. Sean said, I was just joking around about Maya. We're going to get to Maya as well. <laughs> I know what you say. I know what you say. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Midori, cool. Of the four of them, is the most relevant because of the, of the last move. That's it. Sean says, it's a shame that the English version doesn't portray that. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes doing videos regarding Neon Genesis Evangelion, I have that problem because in Spanish it's translated differently. But over the years, it's been 26 years, uh, it's the, the story, Neon Genesis Evangelion, has been translated many, 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 many times. It has different meanings. Especially uh, the Netflix version had uh, some issues uh, regarding Kaoru, right? On episode 24, and Shinji, their dialogue. That has uh, that is being misrepresented a lot. All right, let's move on. The next one is Sakura. Now Sakura is a hit out of the park. <laughs> um, Sakura Susuhara, her first appearance in Reveal was in the second movie, and people try uh, and people forget that she appears uh, in the second act at the end of the second act with Toji. Toji is hugging her because she gets out of the hospital. She's like a little kid. And after that, she appears again in Q in the first act and interacts with Shinji. She looks really fun. And uh, and it's, uh, it's the kind of uh, warming characters that Evangelion is lacking of, right? She's positive uh, and, and she has her, her own personality. Like, none of these characters uh, have, have been more developed than Sakura was. And uh, for me, it's, a, it's an A. She has developed her own fandom. People have been doing cosplays of her, people in the fandom and uh, fan art. She has she has become a cult or a part of the fandoms, and that that is her legacy, right? I like Sakura says Sean a lot. She didn't do much, but she did all she needed for the role she played, which is really fun, funny because she's the one that shot Misato, right? Wasn't Midori, was Sakura. Be, and she wanted to shoot Shinji. Now, if we're talking about cycles, it's a way to interpret the story. Shinji almost killed her in the second movie with the Evangelion, in the first movie with the Evangelion unit against some shell. That's why she ended up in the hospital. And now in the last movie, she almost killed him. And that's a cycle. She's also cute in design, yes. I like her design very well. Great character, great character. Now we have the original personnel, nerve personnel, that then became Wiley. And that is, of course, Aoba, Yuga, and Maya. Aoba, in the original story of the three, is the one that gets less developed. And in reveal, <laughs> he gets even less. So for me, it's an F. And he looks really cool. All we know from him, from Neon Genesis Evangelion, is that he likes guitars. He likes music. Because we see him air playing a guitar in one scene. In one of the early episodes. And he's carrying a guitar when we see him with Maya going out of the laundry. I think it was a laundry in episode. 
what was episode 13 materials episode when the um, when he was with Maya going to the subway uh together and they found uh Koso there right he was carrying a guitar that's all we know from New Genesis Evangelion even when we see him in the end of Evangelion and uh Ray appears to turn him to LCL it's one of the few characters that Ray appears as Ray he doesn't uh, Ray doesn't turn like uh Misato for Hyuga right or Ritsuko for Maya or Yui for Koso no Ray appears like multiple rays behind him and turns him into LCL so it's a character that was never developed in Neon Genesis Evangelion and or Rebuild so for that it's an F Then we have Hyuga. Hyuga on Neon Genesis Evangelion, final episodes, had a bigger role than in the first two thirds of the show. Uh, because he was kind of feeling up for Kaji regarding Misato, right? That was in Neon Genesis Evangelion. He was uh, sharing information with Misato, and uh, and he takes a role in the last third of the show. They were trying to unveil what Sally and Nerf were trying to do. In Rebuild, he doesn't get a, a lot of screen time. The first two movies, he mostly behaved the same as the first two thirds of New Genesis Evangelion. So he doesn't have the time to shine. Like in Neon Genesis Evangelion, he had in the last third. So it was a downgrade, in my opinion. In Neon Genesis Evangelion, for me, he was he he was a C plus. I'm gonna give him a C minus this time. Still a C because in Neon Genesis Evangelion, to tell you the truth, he doesn't have a. I mean, he has a role, but it's not an important role in the last third of the move of the show. And uh, on Rebuild, he has less role. So it goes from a C plus to a C minus, but still a C. He is not at the same level of these guys. And he's, um, in the first two movies, he's kind of the same as, as Midori. So it's kind of hard because he's, he's still more relevant in the first two movies than Midori is on the third one. But I'm going to give him a C minus. Still a C. Right? Then we have Maya. Maya of the three of them, the original three, right, is the one that has more, uh, is more relevant across the story because she is a Ritzko uh, uh, assistant, basically. No, it's being teased. The fan don't have, sh have ship that she has a relationship with Ritsuko. That I do believe that they do in Rebuild. I do believe that these two have a relationship in Rebuild. Uh, in Neo Genesis Evangelion, I don't think they had a relationship at any point. Uh, but she really, really, really liked Ritsuko. As much as Hyuga liked Misato. So, Maya, in Neon Genesis Evangelion Final Third, was really good. And also in the first, uh, in, in the mid-season, when she was uh, helping Ritzko to, for, uh, to fix the Maya, right? And also is a victim of Kaji's, uh, uh, <laughs> let's say, uh, love interest, maybe? He was putting an act, but but it's funny how she how she, how she's being uh, attacked by Kaji in that sense. Uh, in Rebuild, she behaves in line in the first two movies. In the third movie, she is as irrelevant as any of these. But in the fourth movie, she really, really, really shines, and I like Maya. For me, Maya was an improvement. It feels like Maya in anima. 
to tell you the truth. The, uh, the Maya of uh, 3 plus 1. And Maya in Anima is really cool. So that for me is a B. It's an improvement from the original Maya. And uh, I like her design in the last movie, in the last two movies. I would have loved to see more about her and to actually find out if they really were in a relationship, at least on the second, uh, on the third and fourth movie. But I do believe that that Ritsuko and Maya did have a relationship even before the time skip. Uh, there are there are some evidences that point on that direction on the second movie. Okay, so we got them, all of them, out of the way. It's Wiley and their personnel. Let's jump to the village, Village 3. And the first one we have is, is Kaji Jr. There's really nothing I can say about Kaji Jr. She, he's a straight F. Uh, I like the idea of Misato having a son. I think it was pretty cool that he met Shinji, but it was wasted. And um, I, I don't understand, to tell you the truth, why they didn't, why they didn't want Misato and Shin and, and Kaji Jr. to be, you know, in a mother-son relationship. Maybe they thought that it would interfere or it would be very similar to the one with um, Misato with Shinji. I, I really don't get it. But I like the idea of Misato having a son and uh, and that Shinji met him. I like that idea. But Kaji Jr. as a character in 3 plus 1, he only appears, what, a minute? Men uh, less than that? 30 seconds? Shows his hand to Shinji and that's it. Then he appears on the picture that Misato is seeing. So Kaji Jr., I like the idea, poorly executed. He was a waste of a character. Cameron says, uh, I like she was more relevant, but the, but three of her few lines were the exact same. So I would have said C, but I take a B, no. <laughs> With Maya, yeah. Uh, to tell you the truth, what I really like about Maya is the, is the new design. I think her talking responsibility, taking responsibility for near third impact would have been in the way, but I wanted more. You're talking about Kaji Jr. Yeah, and Misato, yeah. I don't know. It's that I envision this meeting uh, I, different. The problem is Village 3. I don't like that sequence of Village 3. I would have put the children reaching directly to, to the wonder. And putting uh, Kaji Jr. in a role similar to, to Sakura. In the ship with Misato. Jeffrey says, uh, love Hikari, her role. We're going to reach through Hikari. So, yeah, there's nothing else I can say about Kaji Jr. Uh, for me, it's a waste. Like the idea, poorly executed idea. Now we have Hikari. So Hikari in the first two movies, she behaves almost the same as uh, in Neon Genesis Evangelion. She doesn't appear on the third movie. And then she has a role on the fourth movie, right? A role that has been criticized. Because when they reach to the village, uh, all the women are pregnant. And the men are the ones that work, working, and the old women are the ones that are working on agriculture. So there's a part of the fandom that says that is uh, that criticizes that, right? That why old women are in, uh, are uh, pregnant in this village? <laughs> well, because it's the apocalypse. They are trying to, uh, you know, uh, trying to survive, and the best way to survive. Is to have kids, right? That's how society survives. If two thirds of the world disappear, we have to repopulate the world. So I get it, but there are people that doesn't get it. 
and Hikari takes one of those roles, right, of a mother. Uh, Sean says, uh, three-fourths of Hikari is an IMO. So Hikari, this is a tough one, because I like Hikari's relationship with Asuka on Neon Genesis Evangelion. I think she could have done more for Asuka in the last part of Neon Genesis Evangelion. In Reveal that was changed, they don't have the same relationship anymore. They kind of show some glimpses on the second movie. But there are some memos that were shared among screenplayer, uh, screenwriters from the second movie. Uh, that was never the intention of putting Hikari as friend of Asuka and Neon Genesis Evangelion. But instead, it was going to put Mari on that role and share those memos on, on my Discord. You can read it there. Uh, so that was the original idea, right? To make Hikari best friend of us of Mari. That didn't happen. Her relationship with Asuka was limited to one time they ate together in the school, and that's it. And on three plus one, she has a. Uh, a mini arc with uh, with Ray Q, right? And that's it. So for me, Hikari is a C in Reveal, and it's not different from Neon Genesis Evangelion. She was a C on Neon Genesis Evangelion, and she's a C on Reveal. I don't know how how much else they could have used her in the last movie other than the, how they used it. Use her. Right? She has a role, she has an arc, but her participation is, is just stay on that, right? I mean, in a mini arc with Ray Q and uh and with Shinji. That's it. Oh, says uh, they gone busy <laughs> in Village 3. Yeah, I guess. Uh, Sean say I can understand the critiques, but gender roles being greater range states makes sense. Jeffrey says C is good enough for me. I mean, C is, uh, is passed. Right? She passed the test. She passed the test on Neon Genesis Evangelion also. I mean, it's a character that, that is important in my opinion, it's important for both stories. In a different way, but there's still... she. Uh, if I would have written Rebuild, uh, I would have put her in Rebuild as well. So now we hope we come to Toji. In Neon Genesis Evangelion, Toji, of course, also had... Uh, and the last episode he appears, that is episode, if I'm not mistaken, episode 20 is the last time that he appears, that he's on the bed. He, he lost a leg and, uh, and an arm after Eva 3 incident. And Hikari is with him in the hospital. That's the last time that we see both of them in Neon Genesis Evangelion. His arc in Neon Genesis Evangelion is only being Shinji's best friend. That's it. And uh, and then in Evangelion Pilot, he gets injured, right? He lost an arm and a leg, literally. And uh, and then that's it. We don't know more about him and he disappears in Neon Genesis Evangelion after that. In Reveal, he is not the pilot of Unit 3, so his role has been, has been diminished a bit. He only plays the Shinji best friend role. And he's a loving brother right, of Sakura. In Neon Genesis Evangelion, he pilots Unit 3. He decides to pilot Unit 3 because Ritsuko offers him to transfer uh, 
uh, to transfer uh, his sister to nurse hospital. Right? That's the reason why he accepts to be a pilot of Unit 3. In the show, they don't show it, but in the manga, it's confirmed that it's, that's the case. I think it's the manga. He has some role on the third movie because Shinji, when he's at Nerve, he's wearing Toji's shirt. He noticed Toji's name in the shirt that Nerve provides him with. That was never explained how Toji's shirt ended up in Nerve. I thought that Toji became a pilot for all these years, like eventually during the time skip, Toji did had an opportunity to become a pilot. That wasn't the case. He was not exposed to the Eva curse, as we can see, and he grew up. So Toji is this physician on the on the last movie. Right? He officially is not a uh, is not a medic, but he acts like one. And uh, it's kind of liaison between the village and What's the organization? Kratos? I think it's Kratos. And Wiley. Right? So he's like the, the village leader. His role was expanded. On the third, uh, in the last movie. His overall, overall role was expanded. So it's kind of difficult here because he's more relevant overall. So I'm thinking I'm gonna be for Toji, but I don't know, man. It's, the feeling is sour with Toji. So I'm gonna put him with his wife. He's better than Neon Genesis Evangelion overall. But still, I think that we could have survived without him making a comeback in the last movie. Let's see. Um, hello, Glubix. Welcome to the stream. Sean Camera says 1.1, 2.2, Toji is C, 3 plus, uh, 3 plus 1, Toji is a B plus. I didn't notice that he lost any limbs. I have to rewatch. Yes, when he's on the bed on the um, episode 20, he's, he doesn't have a leg. I mean, it's covered by the sheets, but if you look closely, he's missing a leg and an arm. Um, Louis says credit. Yes, thank you. Credit. What did I said? Kramer? <laughs> credit. Uh, Glovis says in New Genesis Evangelion he lost limbs. Yes, L let me see if I find a picture to show you guys. Let me see. Let me see if I... Actually, in Anima, his uh, arm and the leg is replaced by a cyborg arm and a cyborg leg. Because they are unable to... Uh, to put him in a prosthesis. Other than that. So if we see in Toji in Anima, I cannot find a picture. Let me. Mm. Anima is a light novel. They don't have a lot of. Uh... Sorry, I I don't I don't find it. But if you check the episode twenty, when he's on the bed, he is missing an arm and a leg. And in Anima, he has that, uh, is replaced by cyborg parts. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Jeffrey says, uh, well, actually, yes, in it is in the manga, if I'm correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, in, sorry, he's what in the manga? Um... I think he dies in the manga. I don't remember, but I think he dies. Does he? 
Maybe I'm wrong, I don't remember, to tell you the truth. Uh, Jeffrey says, next video anima tier list. Yo, but yeah, I see, it's good for Toji. So yeah, overall Toji got a, a, a better, a better portrayal in reveal because of three plus one. If he didn't appear on three plus one, the same as Hikari, they will be both here on F. But three plus one give them an extra, an extra boost. And then we have, <laughs> and then we have uh, Kensuke. Ken Ken. Oh my dear God. Now, I always complain about, uh, before Triple Swan this was, and uh, uh, about Shinji reacting as, she, as he react. Well, no, sorry. For Misato not telling Shinji that Toji was going to be pilot for EVA 3 in New Genesis Evangelion, because I didn't see that's a big deal, right? And the reason why it doesn't look like a big deal, or doesn't seem like a big deal, is because the relationship between Kaji and Toji was never developed in Ninja Genesis Evangelion. Yes, we knew that they were friends, but they never developed to the point that it makes believable that Shinji would be annoyed by it. Right? Shinji in Ninja Genesis Evangelion got more character development with Hikari, uh, with um, Kensuke. Because in episode four, they spend it together. The first time that Shinji uh, leaves Nerf, right? They, they ended up uh, camping. And uh, so it feels like he had a better de uh, development with, uh, with Kensuke than with Doji. However, it could have been better also. Uh, low B, high C, you say, Sean? Chatsuke? And I'm going to explain why is this is hard for me, because I don't like his relationship with Asuka. Uh, and it's not because of him. I didn't like his uh, uh, Asuka's relationship with Kaji either in Neon Genesis Evangelion. I didn't like the concept of it, of any of them. Now, uh, in New Genesis Evangelion, Asuka and Kaji's relationship was because Asuka was in love with Kaji. And in Reveal, it's because to, uh, Kensuke kind of fills up a role of a father-like figure to Asuka. So it's, there are different roles. The problem of Asuka is not the father or, or the lover, it's the mother. And it's never addressed correctly in Reveal. Because, I mean, she's a clone. We know that now. <laughs> but uh, uh, we didn't know that until then. Right? So I don't know, man. I, I didn't like that relationship. But overall, it's un undeniably, Kensuke had a, a, a very important role for Asuka. For Asuka. Very important. More than Hikari did for Reiku, and more than Toji did for Shinji. And he's the only one of the three of them that actually appear on the third act. Right? He's wearing that uh, weird puppet doll costume. Sean says it was great that his survival skills became skill relevant. That, that's true. But if I had to do something with him, I would have give him, given him a different role. Uh, instead of being Kensuke's, uh, Asuka's dad. He would still be a very important asset for the village. But I don't know. I would have given him uh, a different role. Not that one in particular. Uh, Sean says, uh, I already read that. Uh, Jeffrey says, yes, Sean, I like that. Sean says, I don't feel like Kenska was dating Asuka, to be honest. 
And Jeffrey said he was. No, he wasn't. He wasn't at all. He feel, filled up the father figure that they, she never had in Rebuild. So, but, 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 even though that I didn't like that relationship, Kensuke had a more important role in Rebuild that he did in Neon Genesis Evangelion. Because of that. Because of that. So Kensuke is happy. Hate this relationship. Don't like it at all. But he's important in the story of Asuka's arc is undeniably important. That's why he's, uh, he's an important character in Rebuild. Just for that. But to be clear, I don't like this relationship. Uh, Sean said, oh, I misinterpreted the relationship part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Many people misinterpreted it, but I said on this stream on previous days and I show um, articles uh, of Yoko Miyamura talking about Yoko Miyamura is the voice actress, the Japanese voice actress of Asuka saying that their relationship is strictly a father-daughter one. I had a different interpretation the first time I watched the movie. I thought that after the events of the second movie that she ended up in uh, in containment, right? Because she had an angel inside her. Uh, during her rehab, they started to have a relationship. That's what I thought. That's the feeling that I, I thought. But then... Because of the Eva curse, she remained as a kid with a kid body, right? With a teenager dog body. And he grew up and he eventually uh, lost interest on a teenage body and he wanted a woman. So they became friends. <laughs> That's my interpretation the first time I saw the movie. But then after a little research and after watching the movie again and again and again, I realized that this, that never happened. So yeah, don't like the relationship, but happy, happy. <sighs> Sally or Seal. Seal is a, <laughs> um, they had a bigger role in Neon Genesis Evangelion. And they might have had a bigger role in rebuild also but we don't know because we don't have the 14 years time skip story they appear in the second movie they appear again in the third movie so they were around during those 14 years Jeffrey says Asuka is just Asuka Shikinami Asuka is your Shikinami Asuka. <laughs> Tell Isaac <Seth> because Jesus. <laughs> uh, well, I, I just watched the 24 episodes of Neon Genesis Evangelion for, for my uh, Gendry Kari video. And, uh, and Sally is very important to the story. But then I watched the, all the Revealed movies again for my Kendo Ikari video. And it's not the same. They don't feel the same. They feel more obscure. But, I mean, they are there. That's it. <laughs> they are there. They don't make an appearance on the last movie because they are dead. And there's something really interesting that Kaji says. And that's another thing. We never see their human forms in Rebuild. They are all, always appear as monolith. So we never see the face of Kill Lawrence as in New Genesis Evangelion. Right? But in the second movie, Monolith 1 is a credit as Kill Lawrence. So Monolith 1 is in fact Kill Lawrence. 
uh, why they are not shown as monolith, uh, as, as human in Reveal. Now, this is my speculation, all right? This is my idea. In Reveal third movie, um, Gandalf says to them, you all quit your humanity. And then, in 3 plus 1, he says to Shinji and Misato and Ritsuko that he, by consuming the key of Nebuchadnezzar, he lost his humanity. So that leads me to believe that Sele, they all consume the a key of Nebuchadnezzar before Gendo did. Now the question is, how many key of Nebuchadnezzar were, were they, right? Probably just one, the one that we are shown. But when Kaji, in the second movie, takes the key of Nebuchadnezzar out of the Bethany base and delivers it to Gendo, he says, this is the spare one. Before showing the key of Nebuchadnezzar. So that leads me to believe also that there were multiple key of Nebuchadnezzar. And Sele consumed all of them, and there was a spare one that is the one that Kaji brought to, uh, to Gendo Ikari. So that's maybe the reason why they, we never show, they are never shown the faces, because they are all like Gendo is in the last movie. They are lost their humanity, as Gendo said on the third movie. Uh, Richard Nixon says, uh, if Asuka is a clone, what happened to the original? She's uh, in Unit 13, but why? If Asuka is a clone, what happened to the original? Uh, the original Soju, uh, they are different characters. Anu has said it multiple times that Shikinami Asuka is a different character than Soju Asuka. Uh, that was also confirmed by Yoko Miyamura multiple times. Now, the reason why they, they changed their name, according to Anu, is that, um, is that they wanted to give her uh, a more Japanese-like uh, last name, which is BS, right? in my opinion. That's just poop. The reason why they changed the name, this is my opinion, is because he did, he his Asuka is Neon Genesis Evangelion Asuka, is Soju Asuka. Shikinami Asuka is not his Asuka. That Asuka is uh, of the director of, of the Rebuild continuity. And uh, what's his name? Um, I forgot his name. Um, the name of the director. Wait. Give me a sec. I cannot forget the name of the director of Reveal. Uh, of course, Surumaki. Right. Surumaki. So, Gendikari. Uh, Gendikari. Um, <laughs> uh, Hideki Anno. Uh, he gave to Surumaki, who is the director, the, the responsibility to develop Shikinami Asuka. And that's the reason, in my opinion, is that the reason why they changed their, her last name. Surumaki came with the idea to put Asuka into Unit 3 in Rebuild. Surumaki came to, with the idea to make Asuka a clone. So, they are different Askas. Soju Asuka is Hideki Anno Asuka. Shikinami Asuka is Surumaki's. Okay. And what was the, the other question? She's in Unit 13, but uh, you are talking about the original. All right. So how did she end up in Unit 13, the original? Is that she is not in Unit 13. She is in the entry block of Unit 2. And she rescues Asuka in the entry block of Unit 2 and absorbs her to Unit 13. Now, a proper question will be what Asuka's original was doing in Unit 3 when she got consumed by Bartiel. Because we see... Let me see if I, I get it on my Discord. Let me see. 
And this is my last, last live stream. I don't know why <laughs> every time I do a live stream, I ended up talking about Asuka, but there we go again. Let me see. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Okay, so this is in the entry block. I don't know why my cursor is not showing. There we go. Uh, she's in the entry block of unit three, and she's being consumed by Bertiel. And then we are shown her original face at the end of the entry block. So how the original ended up in unit three? That's a that's a valid question. Because this is not unit two, it's unit three. That's a question that I don't have answer to. But regarding unit 13, is that she is uh, taking, the original is taking Asuka's Shikinami from the entry plot in unit two to unit 13 that Kaoru is already there, in Unit 13, right? And Kaoru is in Unit 13 because he died in Unit 13 on Rebuild Q. I hope that answered the question, Richard. Sean Cameron says, uh, Sele made no sense without the time skip. That's correct, because Sele was very angry before the time skip. And then they were body-body with Gendo Ikari on the third movie. Again, now, of course, we are not taking into consideration Kaoru, who is Celeste's kid. Right? He's Celeste's boy. And we know from what Anno have said that Kaoru was uh, commander at Nerf during the time skip. So it's why? Because he represents Sele. And and both of these dudes, they were on the run. So how they did come back? And Sele accepted him again and gave him Commander Ikari again and, and Deputy Commander or Vice Commander Koso. Relegating um, Kaoru. I have no idea. That, that's, that's what the movie the, or manga or whatever they do regarding Daisuke has to explain. How come Sele accepted them back? Right? <clears throat> Um, Geoffrey says, haha, sad for Sele. Have sad for Sele, though. I would have loved to see more. I always wanted a prequel of the story that tells us more about Sele, more about Kaoru, more about uh, uh, Gendo Ikari, Yui. You can do a prequel with Yui as, a, as, a, as the main character. That would be very interesting. See her relationship with Sele, see her relationship with Gendo. From Yui's perspective, let Yui tell the story for once. I think that would be very interesting. Uh, let's see, Sean says, uh, they seem to all be dead by the time of third, and maybe in all of them, they are not to very all in general. Well, they are not dead because Kill Lawrence has a couple of lines when Gendo is talking to them in Reveal Q. Now, in 3 plus 1, they are already dead because they die in Reveal Q. Gendo Ikari convinced them to commit suicide because they to he told them that uh, instrumentality is happening. Right? It wasn't. It was a lie. Uh... Jeffrey says, your idea of Sele that they don't appear in the reveals as human is pretty good, in my opinion. I do believe that. I do believe that they all consume, if not a key of Neukanis, are something similar. And they quit their human form, and that's the reason they are not showing us their new, new form. Right? 
And again, I base it on Kagi. Kagi saying that that's the spare one, the key of Nebuchadnezzar. And then Gendo saying on the third movie that they all uh, uh, quit their humanity. And then he's saying to himself that he has quit his humanity. It makes sense. Um, Sean Cameron says that makes sense. Um, Richard says, I assume Sele was uh, just a program in Reveal. And Gendo turned them off. Almost like the Patriot system. <laughs> uh, well, they, they were very real. But they they feel like they are never there. That's my problem. Because they built. They built the Mark series. All the Mark Evangelion units, all of them, all of them are Celes units. Mark 6, Mark se the Mark 7s, the appear on 3 plus 1. Mark 9, 10, 11, 12. Mark 9 uh, uh, got destroyed on the third movie and then it was rebuilt again by Gendo. It appears again in 3 plus 1. It has a different shape, but it's the same unit. All the Mark series are Celes. And uh, the units are made by Nerf. They are built differently. The mark, the marks, they don't have 80 fields. Probably because Sele consumed key of Neukanisar, so they don't have 80 fields either because they lost their human humanity. Right? But then Unit 13 doesn't have an 80 feet either. And it's an Evangelion unit. But it was built by Gendi Kari. From what we know, right? Uh, so all of this is speculation. All, all of this can change, by the way. Uh, I wish I knew, uh, Cameron says, uh, I wish I knew what the key was because it seemed to have Adam's role. I thought it was an Adam. I, I also thought, many people thought it was an Adam. I actually made a video saying that it was an Adam. It wasn't an Adam. Jeffrey says, uh, how about Sele has secretly acquired, acquired actually the souls of the dead people in the rebuilds, a theory. Soldier is my favorite. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think because in, in Neon Genesis Evangelion, all the souls are stored in the Goth gates or the gates of Goth or the Goth chamber. That's the, that's the lore of Goth. Actually, Ritzko, in episode 23, tells to Misato that, that when that Ray, uh, Ray only has one soul and the rest of them are clones, soulless clones, because the Goth, uh, Goth is empty. That's, there's no more souls. Right? Now, that's, uh, that's very debatable what she's trying to say. Because it seems like she's trying to say is that Ray has Lilith's soul because Gendo couldn't take a soul out of Goth. That's what it seems that she's trying to say. But that doesn't make any sense because that basically what he's saying is that whoever burn, uh, was born uh, after Ray 1 or before Ray 1 didn't have a soul either. That back in the day we all believed, we're talking about, I'm talking mid-90s here. We all believed that the reason why Nerd was choosing kids is because they didn't have souls and they acted as soul to the Evangelion units. Right? So they were the souls of the Evangelion units and those, those were the theories back in the day of Neon Genesis Evangelion. That, of course, later was uh, clarified by Gainax and by Anno and they said that they do have souls. So that theory went over the window. <laughs> and in the end, the end of Evangelion, when the Goth, uh, when Goth is open, is when Lilith is starting to to retrieve the souls, right? But in Neon, in Rebuild, the Goth gates or the Goth chambers, 
they take you to the uh, anti-universe and that takes you to the Golgotha object and all that that we saw on Triple Swan. So, I see what you're saying regarding that. It could be possible, but I think it's more possible that, that to happen in New Genesis on getting that in, in real build, given that what we saw on Triple Swan. Oh, says, uh, Shape Impact is my... <laughs> shape Impact is my headcanon where Gendon sent it on. Well, he shaved his uh, face, right? <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's an ad. I think it was Gillette ad. It was Gillette or was Chic. Uh, Sean Cameron said, I guess Sorgi took her mom's role. I'm trying to... No, I think that uh, Asuka says that her mother in Reveal. Uh, she never met her mother or her mother wasn't around and uh, her father died. So it's a different background that she had, that Soryu had. Soryu, uh, mother, uh, committed suicide in front of her and um, and, his, and her father was still alive by the events of Neon Genesis Evangelion because he talks to uh, her stepmother over the phone in episode 22, I believe it is. That she speaks German over the phone. So it's different backgrounds. There are different backgrounds. Now it is this. It is this. Again, let's return to <laughs> let's return to this. It is this that one of these Askas, because when I don't have a picture here, but when we show the tanks, Aska is not shown as a kid. When we see the clones, they are all teenagers. So who the heck is this kid? <laughs> right? What does this mean? If the clones they are already the, the the it has Aska's body, the teenage body, then who the heck is this teen? And it's here it says S S Aska. Shikinami Soryu, Shikinami whatever you want to give it that meaning. We don't know anything about that. But of course, this is the bear that Soryu used to have in Neon Genesis Evangelion. We don't see this bear with Shikinami. So all of this is a mess. Because this is trying to say that this kid is Soryu. But then he's contradicting. Anu is contradicting himself because he's saying that Soryu is a different Asuka that doesn't appear in Reveal. But then we are being told here that maybe Shikinami Asuka saw the memories of Soryu Asuka that makes sense with this that she's wearing the end of Evangelion block suit that doesn't exist in Reveal. This is a unique block suit that doesn't appear in Reveal, only appears in Neon Genesis Evangelion. So there's a possibility that this is all you ask, and not Shikinami. But all of this is speculation and, <laughs> and fan theories, to tell you the truth. It's fun to play around with these things, but it's only that. <clears throat> um, let's see what else. Jeffrey says the Asuka of Unit Three, uh, of Unit Three, is a clone of the other Asuka as Shiginami uh, version. Yeah, that would make sense. But how? How did? She, maybe maybe she's in the entry block. She's not in the in the Bengali unit. And maybe it's the same entry block of Unit 2 and, and Unit 3. Maybe. Maybe. Let's see. Um, oh, say, maybe when Bardiel is consuming her, she maybe had a glimpse of someone similar to her. Sorry. 
like a near-death experience. It is possible. It is possible. Jeffrey says Mark 11. Sean says uh, uh, no IT field equal no soul, right? Yeah, I think that's the case. Or oh, one of the reasons. Uh, Sean says, when did Ritzko say that? I figured Ray having Lily's soul was intentional and the others had no soul, so they could have taken on Lily's soul. It's, she said it when she was killing the clones on, a, on episode 23, at the end of episode... Yeah, at the end of episode 23, when she kills the clones, she says it. Uh, Jeffrey says, if Kaji Jr. is in the, on the list, how about Evangelion Unity Imagine? <laughs> the Evangelion Imaginary. Uh, a chic ad. Uh, I love Gendo ascending without beer. Shaving the beer and being happy. Maybe she ha he had fleas on the beer and that was the reason why he was grumpy all the time. Um, also, yeah, kind of coarse and a bit wholesome too. Sean, Sean says, it is the anti-universe. So maybe all of us can merge into one. It's possible. It's possible. Jeffrey says, sort you backpack was just a backpack that Shikinami stole in the reveals. I mean, doesn't make sense. It's a mess. Richard says, a quick question. The second impact happens on Earth, which leads to the Adam converting to embryo and Sele moving the soul to Kaoru. Then why does Kaoru awaken on the moon in each loop? That's a question that never been answered. All right. So if we believe in the loop, I do believe in the loop. There are parts of the fandom that they are not believing in the loop. Not the majority, but a good part, a big chunk. Um, the Adam is Adam. The Adam that appears on Neon Genesis Evangelion is Adam. All right. Which means that Kaoru gets Adam's soul. Right? Now we know in Reveal, uh, Kaoru is the 17th angel of Tabris. In Neon Genesis, in, in Reveal, sorry, that's in Neon Genesis in Evangelion. In, in Reveal, he is the first angel. And the reason why I believe all of this is objective because we don't have answers. The reason why I believe that he's the first angel is because he's carrying that soul from the origin of the loop, that that's in Genesis Evangelium, second impact, right? And then, and this is very weird, uh, Gendo Ikari makes him to down, he, he downgrades him, right? In the in Q. So he becomes the 13th angel. He lost his position as the first angel. That never was explained either. We don't know why Gendo wanted that to happen and who replaced him as the first angel. We don't know that. It's possibly that the Evangelion Imaginary is the first angel now. Maybe. But also, Gendo Ikari call, uh, Kaoru calls Gendo Ikari the king of the Lilims. What the heck does that mean? Now that we, we, there's so many things and question marks because we don't know how Lilith was uh, the Lilith, Lilith, the original Lilith of, uh, of Reveal, the white Lilith, uh, how she was awakened. Why she has Jui's face? Why? We don't know that. They never show us that. The reason why Lilith has Ray's face in the end of Evangelion is because Ray got into Lilith. That's the reason. But Ray in Reveal Q was in Unit 1, and Unit 1 was in space, and then it was in the Wonder. So there's no way, there's no way that Ray was. Uh, into into Lilith, unless there's another Le Ray from the Ayanami series without a soul, because Kaoru confirmed the Ray Q didn't have a soul, right? Why? Because the soul was in Unit One, uh, merged with uh, with with Lilith. We don't know. 
So there's, those are the big question marks that Q left. Why Kaoru downgraded? Why, Kaoru, why Gendo needed the, the first angel to be vacancy? Why Kaoru called him uh, the king of the Lilims? How Lilith had Jewish face? Those are unanswered questions. Uh, o says, uh, I'm going to go a little bit of topic. If Kaoru said that humans living is a starting third impact, human instrumentality projects years before the event of 3 plus 1, I really like the idea of the time skip. The time skip was a mistake, in my opinion. And, and, uh, and it wasn't the original idea. The original idea, according to Anu, is that he was going to make a movie uh, telling about the events because he showed some of that movie at the end of the second movie, right? That we see Gendo and and Koso with a with a donkey. Those events happened, according to Anu, and he never translated into a film that the project was in course and the story is made, but. He never made anything with that because he couldn't make a film about uh, of Evangelion without the lead. And who's the lead? Shinji. And Shinji missed the 14 years. So he decided to time skip until Shinji returns. So yeah, it was a mistake because you're not <laughs> you're not even explaining exactly what happened. If Reveal Q explained the things that happened. Reveal Q is the shortest movie of the four. The shortest of them. One hour, 20 minutes, I think it lasts. One hour, 30 minutes. You know, one hour, and, and let me check. Reveal Q. Reveal Q is 96 minutes. Right? The first movie is 98 minutes. Uh, the theatrical version. The second movie is 108 minutes. The theatrical version. Rebel Q is 96 minutes, and then 3 plus 1 is 155 minutes. So Rebel Q is the shortest move, and it's the one that had more to explain. They didn't use that time. They, start, they, they instead put <laughs> Kaoru speaking codes. That's what they did. Jeffrey says, loop is true to me, to me as well. I think there's undeniable proof in 3 plus 1 that shows that the loop connects both stories. There are people that believe that that's not the case, that the loop is only uh, in the reveal continuity. That doesn't connect the stories, that it, it, it exists only in reveal. Uh, o says another reality, maybe the events in 3 plus 1 is a different reality where Shinji succeeds. Just my opinion, not big deal. It could be. Sean says, perhaps the moon just has different clones of Kaoru store on it. Also, the moon comes from the far, so some weird uh, time stuff may be going on. Kaoru was originally the first and 17th because he had Adam soul. Maybe something with that. He has Adam soul, but in the in Neon Genesis Evangelion, he's designated as the 17th angel because he's not Adam, he's Kaoru, even though he has the soul of Adam. Uh, but I know what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Uh, regarding the coffins in the moon is confirmed in 3 plus 1 that they are all Kaoru's. And, uh, and the reason why it's on the moon because the loop doesn't affect the moon. That's the reason why they are on the moon, and that's the reason why Kaori is able to remember every time he awakes. So after all this chat of Evangelion lore, <laughs> how do I rate Sally? Uh, for all those reasons, I guess, for the past 20 minutes, <laughs> for me, Sally is a big F. It's a big disappointment. And they are such a cool organization, man. But 
Are they an F? Maybe they are a C. I'm trying to think because in the first, no, it's, a, it's an F. I do like them floating on space talking to Kaoru. That's pretty cool. But on Neon Genesis Evangelion, they were there from beginning to end. Although they think that the first appearance of, of Sele was on episode 2. But they appear all the way until the end of Evangelion. F for Sele, yes. It's a big disappointment. And they got an upgrade on how they look, the monolith. Because in, in Neon Genesis Evangelion, they are plain black. Now they are they have this red tint. The logo got improved. Now it has um it has the, the snake and the apple. But still we don't know who they are as in Neon Genesis Evangelion. They have less screen time. We don't see them really conspiring. So ugh, they are a big disappointment in reveal. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, Vinicius says, uh, the same as, as Kaji Jr. Yeah, that's why I'm doubting. Maybe it's a C. Because they do have a role. Important one. Misat, uh, Kaji Jr. doesn't have a role. So yeah, no, you're right. It's a C. It's a C. They have a role, as all of them, a limited role, as all of them, and they miss one movie, as all of them. <laughs> Although, well, I guess that he appears in the four movies and she only appears in the in the last two. Uh, but these three miss one movie. If I have to, I mean, comparing, if we're going to compare Sele, of uh of Neon Genesis Evangelion with Sele of Reveal. <laughs> I mean there's no comparison there. Uh but yeah I think it's a C. This is they have a role. This one they don't have a role. <laughs> they have a role. They have a role. It's a C. It's a C. What about that guy with the visor? He had some name, Bistros. Yes, King Lawrence. He's credited as a monolith one in the second movie, I think. But we never see his face. He's the same voice actor, though. So he's a still King Lawrence. Oh, says he didn't do much. Like, he's just there to patch some plot holes. Yeah. Mm, no, but you're right. I mean, if, if I'm going to put uh, Kaji Jr. in F, I cannot put Cell in F. Maybe I should put D. If I would have put a D here, maybe Cell is a D and all of these are still F. But they are right. Cell is a C. Cell is a C. All right, let's move on with Koso. Give me a second, guys. Sorry, my, my phone was ringing. Okay. <clears throat> One hour and 30 minutes into the stream. I'm still <laughs> not talking about the main characters. <laughs> Let's uh, jump to Koso. I wanted to do a short stream today. Now, uh, again, his counterpart in Neon Genesis Evangelion is better. And episode 21 is basically him telling the whole story, right? The prequel. His conversation and interaction with uh, with Gendo are very important to develop Gendo's uh, character. Um, he, thanks to him, we know the 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 truth about Yui, right?
and in in it diffs in contrast in revealed he basically has the the same role in the first movie which are the first six episodes of neon genesis evangelion is not a big role and on the second movie is also the same on the third movie he has an important role showing shinji uh jewish picture and telling shinji about uh, his mother and on the on three plus one koso was um was in charge of the Ayanami series. Well, he was in charge of the Ayanami series in Q. And he's left behind by, by, by Gendo at the doors of uh, the anti-universe. And then he helped Mary to stop Gendo. That's his role in Reveal. In Neon Genesis Evangelion, he tells the prequel, episode 21, but he sticks with Gendo all the way to the end. Right? Which con Koso do I like more? That's a good question. <laughs> Richard says, Sela gets an F, all is good. <laughs> uh, O says he didn't do much, like uh, he's just there to patch some plot holes. Right, right that. Sean says Fuyutsuki is a C, I guess. His role was just the same without the backstory, and we see him in action. Sigma says he's a B. He survived the second impact in the slums as a doctor. He's a smooth operator. Don't forget, most of the world likely died due to a starvation after the second impact. That's true. And I do agree with you that in Neon Genesis Evangelion, He's a solid B. But in Rebuild, the, the thing is that at the end, everything works because he he agrees to cooperate with Mari. And that's a... He, he has that crucial moment. So I'm going to put him B. Because he's very relevant to the story, especially at the end of the story. I like Koso in Neon Genesis Evangelion better, but I do like this version of Koso too. And he has a crucial role at the end of the story. Very important role. So he's happy, in my opinion. Alright. Gendu Kari. This is a stress S. The first S of the list, in my opinion, in Rebuild. Gendu Kari in Rebuild is one of the few uh, characters that actually had a better portrayal on Rebuild than in Neon Genesis Evangelion. And in Neon Genesis Evangelion, he was an S tier also. And still, if this list will have an S+, plus, in Reveal, he will be S+. Plus. And it's all because of the last movie. Gendo Ikari... In my opinion, Gendo Ikari is the best character of Reveal, to tell you the truth. Overall. Overall. He has a very good character development. Very good. Now, it didn't work out without the last movie. We needed the last movie to complete that. But I will always remember Rebuild as, uh, as, as one of, the, of, of Gendo's stories. What a great performance Gendo had. Um, Sigma Male says uh, he's a smooth operator. Uh, I already read that. Shen says uh, Gendo is an S. He's an S. He's an S. O says, wait, if we saw Mari talk to Fujitsuki in the ship, I forgot what it's called, 
Um, uh, they have all these German names. I don't remember each one of them. Uh, and later in the movie, we saw Mari destroy the three ships. So it's for you to get that for you to turn into LCL. When Mari left. So yeah, he's dead. <laughs> Sigma says, uh, oh yeah, Gendo would go down history as one of the greats. Sean says Gendo and Shinji were by far my favorites. Oh, says Shape Impact. Yeah, same. Sigma says, uh, when Gendo was a young man, he managed to secure a spot among the global elite in Sally Council. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason is because of Yui, because Yui was a member of Cell. Now, how Yui reach to be a member of Cell? That's where we don't know too much. According to Neon Genesis Evangelion 2 video game, the confidential archives, says that it's because she was uh, a, a daughter of one of the Celes uh, uh, member, committee members. That's the reason why she was Celes. And, uh, and Evangelion fan theories have gone all the way to say that Yui Kari was the daughter of Kill Lawrence. I don't go that far. <laughs> I don't go that far. But it is established on Neon Genesis Evangelion 2 video game that Yui Kari was daughter of a very important member of, uh, of Sele. Sean says uh, his realization that Shinji was where he should have looked for Yui the whole time and that last Yui he murders was heartbreaking. Yes, it was heartbreaking. Yui Kari uh, ending was one of the best endings. It was so good. So good. Um, Sigma Mail says, very impressive for basically a nobody at the time. Yeah. Sean says, Fujitsuki is dead because of the L containment field. Yeah. Uh, Sean says, yeah, you is, is related to a Sele member, not in Sele. Irk? You is related to a Sele member, that's true. Not in Sele Irk? What do you mean with Irk? Sele Irk? <laughs> so Gendo in 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 Neon Genesis Evangelion, things don't turn out as he wanted. And I haven't made that video yet, but the reason why uh, Yui... Uh... Now, okay, so there's a lot of interpretations here because Gendo didn't turn into LCL in the end of Evangelion, okay? It is said that the reason why he didn't turn into LCL is because Ray rejected him. So Ray didn't want to turn him into LCL. And, uh, and Yui decided to kill him. And that's the reason why uh, Unit 1 it's him, right? Kills him. So things don't go as good as planned for all good old Gendo in the end of Evangelion. But he gets a happy ending on the on rebuild. He gets a good arc, really good path to redemption. I mean, he dies also right, with Yui. But, but it's different. It's different. It's a positive ending. And I think that that that's what rebuild is because he wanted to rebuild Joey. Right? Uh, Sigma says, so was Joey a genocidal maniac as well? Joey. Well, Gendo, the reason why Gendo is taking the decisions that he's taking is because he wants to reunite with Joey. If Joey wouldn't have disappeared into Unit 1, Probably Gendo would have followed Seal's command, Celeste's command, that by the way, before Yui, in Neon Genesis Evangelion, there was not human instrumentality program. That came after Yui. In Rebuild, it came before Yui's death, because it was proposed by Dr. Katsuragi, who disappeared in 2000, right? Misato's father. 
But in Neon Genesis Evangelion, um, Sele wanted to provoke a new impact uh, after the second impact. Now, the second impact was an accident. Okay? Uh, Sele did want it to happen. And that's maybe the reason why Gendo left. I didn't mention that on my video. But that's the reason why Gendo left that day after. But, but the Katsuragi expedition was not trying to provoke it. So probably if Dr. Katsuragi in Neon Genesis Evangelion was going to be able to actually succeed with his uh, contact experiment in the South Pole and no second impact happened, probably Sele would have uh, provoked later the second impact. Now they needed a second impact for the, for the angels to come, but they didn't have a plan on, on how to end it, right? And that's how Gendo came with the human instrumentality, just because he wanted to reunite with you. Right? Now it seems that revealed that was always the case. In in New Genesis Evangelion, if Dewey wouldn't have disappeared, uh I don't think the human instrumentality will have played out the same way. I don't I, I don't see it. To tell you the truth, I, I don't see the motivation for Gendo to, to do the, the instrumentality program or project with Jui alive. It makes no sense. What were Jui's motivations in Reveal? I don't know, because they were never explained. But in, in New Genesis Evangelion, it was to stop Celes. But Yui did want the third impact. She did want it, the third impact. And, uh, well, it's not that she wanted. She saw it as, as something that could not be prevented. So she did nothing. How do we know this? Because at the end of the end of Evangelion, he, she is in Unit 1 in space. And she says something like, uh, as long as the an Evangelion uh, exists, it's a proof of humanity to exist. That, that was her goal, to exist forever. So you tell me if that's not uh, the attitude of a, of a maniac or a psychopath, to live forever and be the proof that humanity exists. Because that's what she says, not me. She says that in the end of Evangelion. And she went into Unit 1, wanted that to happen. So I wouldn't say that she's a genocidal maniac, but she's, she wasn't this innocent, pure woman that we are being portrayed for all these stories. Uh, Sean says, if I remember correctly, Sigma says she seemed a bit in a, a bit off in the show. O says, no, particularly. Sigma says, Tang Misato father proposed the human instrumentality project. What a freak! Sean says, uh, Jui most likely knew that she couldn't prevent it, so she tried to put set up her version of her own. That's correct, that's that's what she did. And um, in both stories, it's play out right in both stories. Because she was happy at the end of the end of Evangelion, and she was happy at the end of Reveal. So it played out her way. She was a family member to a cell member, so she likely knew about the, the human instrumentality project beforehand. Yeah, well, the human instrumentality project in Neon Genesis by Evangelion came after she disappeared because it was Kendo Ikari who developed human instrumentality. Sigma says, why would she want a third impact? Uh, she doesn't, she don't want a third impact. She, she didn't prevent it. She, she couldn't prevent it when she was alive. And she saw it a way to, or because there's this theory also, all right? 
Uh, some people say that what you got in vision was that the Evangelion units was going to be the next step, uh, next step of human evolution. So what she did to in unit one, all humans should do, all survival should do the same. So humanity will survive being part of our Evangelion unit. That's a theory. Okay. So we sell it having nine Evangelion units in, in the end of Evangelion. Plus unit two. You could say that you was trying to save nine people, ten people. <laughs> I don't know, man. But then you have Yui in Neon Genesis Evangelion, in the end of Evangelion, that when Asuka needed help, she did nothing. But when Asuka died, she she got rid of the bacali of the bacalite and and helped Shinji. But she she waited. She was aware of what was happening. But she did nothing until Asuka died. So it's probably that she didn't like Asuka. Uh, Sigma says, yeah, but I don't know uh, why anyone who survived Second Impact would want to do that all again unless they are mentally ill. Sally is very powerful and people were scared of Sally. People, there, there are some people that say that the reason why she took the decision that she took is because she thought that she was going to be murdered by Sally. So she was going to end up dead either way. Sally was... Uh, Sally is the most important organization in the world, right? They have all the political power, all the money that you can imagine. And they are playing with this stuff. With the apocalypse and ending the world, force human evolution and all this stuff. I guess that in the second impact, the reason why they call it second impact is because they told to the public that it was a meteor. And the first impact is the, the meteor that ended up with the dinosaurs. Then, according to the Lord, the first impact actually was Adam that reached uh, the Earth. <coughs> Sorry, the white moon. No, sorry, it's, a, it's another way around. Uh, Adam was always here in Earth. And then the first impact was when, was, uh, was when Lilith came. Now, according to the Lord, there cannot be an Adam and a Lilith in the same planet. And that's the reason why all this happened. That, that, that's according to the death script uh, role. Death sees rolls? What was the name of it? Death sees uh, scrolls. Humans come from Lilims, but the hairs of these planets are the Adams, not the Lilims. That's the, the original lore. Of Neo Genesis Evangelion. Uh, Cameron says, I was pretty sure Sele developed. Episode 21, Gendo Ikari proposed to, to Sele, according to Koso, in Neo Genesis Evangelion. And in Revealed, according to Gendo, was proposed by Dr. Katsuragi. And Dr. Katsuragi died in 2000, so it was proposed before Yui died. Um, Sigma says, I think Endo's obsession for Yui developed only after she died. Yes. Uh, I agree. I agree. Sean says the second impact was Adam and the actual moon contained Lilith Black Moon. Yes, the second impact was Adam Awakening. Right? But the first impact, Adam was already here, but Adam was frozen in the South Pole. Then during the first impact, there is the meteor that destroyed the dinosaur. That, that was actually Lilith that reached Earth by mistake. Because a fruit of wisdom cannot be with the fruit of knowledge in the same planet, according to the ancestral races. So Lilith here was a mistake. 
But Lilith did have an off offspring, the Lilims, because she wasn't frozen as Adam was. When Adam awoke in the, on, on the second impact, the reason why Selen needed Adam to awoke to awake was for the coming of the angels. Why? Because the Dead Sea Scrolls talk about them. They needed to awake Adam. The third angel in Rebuild was a, a, was a problem for Genducari because it was alive. So they needed to kill him. That's why uh, Kaji, it is said that Kaji, it, or it is teased, right, that Kaji liberated the angel, the third angel in Rebuild, in the Bethany base, so Mari could kill her. Or kill it because according again according to the Dead Sea Scrolls all of the angels have to be destroyed it doesn't work out if one of the angels is being in containment uh, human basically invasive species correct sorry second impact was Lilith Richard says, speaking of impacts, Unit 1 is based on Lilith and Rey has Lilith's soul. So when Shinji saves Rey and sh brings her into Unit 1, why does that start the near third impact? Uh, there was no element of Adam in this. That's a good question. Uh, the uh, again, Unit 1 is a, is a clone of Lilith. It's not Lilith. So I think that's the answer. They need the actual Lilith. Now the near third impact almost happened. And that's the reason why Kaoru stopped. What we see at the end of the second movie is Gendo's scenario. And the reason why Kaoru stopped is because Sele didn't want it to happen. Sele wanted uh, uh, the true Evangelion, what they call the true Evangelion, that is this to be Unit 13. Do it with Lilith. The real Lilith. <laughs> First impact. Unit 1, uh, Sean says, Unit 1 had a S2 engine and is a Lilith clone. You need one had an end to angel. Oh, redacted. <laughs> uh, o says uh, third impact stated. Richard says, but Ray used to pilot unit one previously and it never caused any impacts, right? Um, no. No, she didn't. Uh, unit one, no. Uh, they. They. Yeah, they never. She was never able to synchronize with Unit 1. She always piloted Unit 0 and she had problems piloting Unit 0. That's where the reason why Unit 0 went berserk. But yes, one of the original ideas of Kendrick Ari was to make Rey pilot Unit 1. Probably he called Shinji in because he, he couldn't make that work. But in the perfect world, probably Gendo will have used Ray in Unit 1. Richard says, I may be overthinking. Maybe. O says, uh, uh, it started when Shinji saved Ray because at that time, Ray's soul is exposed to Serrell's. Maybe, I don't know. Also, Serrell is an Aiden uh, child, right? It's an Aiden child. So Lilith, soul, now is inside an angel. That's not good news. <laughs> Why Nerf tries to prevent angels to reach the geofront? Because Lilith is inside it. The forbidden union between an Adam and a Lilith. 
Mm. No, it doesn't. It is not the Adam. It's not the Adam, but it's an Adam children. It's an Adam child. Said well, or the angels. Any of the angels who have reached to the uh, terminal dogma could have, could have caused uh, the new impact. That's the reason they tried to prevent it. Um, what else? That's it? Okay, let's move on. Uh, Get the garrison S. S tier, hands down. That's it. Let's move on with Ritzko. Ritzko, in, in Neon Genesis Evangelion, she's in love with uh, Gendikari and they have a relationship, a human relationship, right? I don't know if that's still the case on Rebuild. Because they never tease it as they do in Neon Genesis Evangelion. Now the way she she shot at him and uh, in the fourth movie, it kind of hints that they were involved somehow. But either way, that relationship was never explored right on on the Genesis Evangelion. It's not part of the story. Something that we are hinted with. And, uh, and that's it. We are confirmed. We we're, we confirmed that on episode twenty three and episode twenty four. Sorry, when after she destroys the clones, Kendikari pays a visit to him to her, and she says, "Uh, uh she confirms that they had a relationship." Right. Also, at the end of episode twenty twenty three, she says it to Misato when she destroys the clones. And that's it. That's uh, what we know about the relationship in Neon Genesis Evangelion. Revealed, it, we don't get that far. And um, trying to think how relevant was she on the on the third movie? She does. She doesn't have any major role in the third movie. Now, in the fourth movie. She survives. She also created the uh, Gaius, uh, the Spear of Gaius, which was crucial for the for the end of the story. Um, she survived, and according to Misato. Uh, what it's like hinted is that she's going to be the new leader of Wiley, so de facto she's going to be the new leader of of, of the survivors. Right? So she's overtaking Misato's role in the aftermath that we're never shown. In Neon Genesis Evangelion, she kills the clones. And um, what else? She kills an angel, right? You will. She killed an angel herself. The Evangelion that came as a as an infection, as a virus, right, into the headquarters. She doesn't kill an engine on reveal. She does create Gaios. I don't like her <laughs> short hair, by the way. That doesn't make any sense because it's established that she this is not her natural color. So why she has a short hair with blonde? Why? Why would you do that to yourself? In in the in the apocalypse. Mm. 
I mean, if it's 21st century France, I can understand it, but it's not. It's the end of the world. So you cut your hair and you dye it? <laughs> what? Why? So I don't have anything against the short hair, but it, it, it cut it. I, I don't know. What else can I say about Rich Queen Reveal? Her role was diminished overall. She looks cool in the second movie. I do like her on the second movie and the way she looks with Kaji and uh, and uh, when she interacts with Misato in the first movie. She's always smoking. That's another thing. Ritsuko, in New Genesis Evangelion, she smokes, but we are never shown her smoking. Only once in episode 21 that she smokes, right? As a, as a form or, or, or as a... That we are shown, I mean, it's this that she smokes because she has all these ashes around her desk and all that, but we never see her with the cigarettes on, on her on her face in New Genesis Evangelion. Only once, episode 21. And she was at school. She was lighting a cigarette. In Revealed, we are shown her smoking. And she looks cool. Uh, she, re she looks really cool. That doesn't mean that you should smoke. You shouldn't. But it looks cool. I did like Ritzko. In the first movie, in the second movie. The hair portrayal of the classic Ritzko relaxed Ritzko. How she looked. But other than that, Ritsuko in New Genesis Evangelion did kill an angel. <laughs> what do you have to prove? To what do you have to show to to tell me that you are better? Nothing. So mm, she did create Gaius. So the question is, is she more relevant to the story than these five? Or is as relevant as these three? I think she, she is as relevant as these three. Because she created the Spirit of Gaius. The only reason why she's a bit. The only one. Nothing else. Ritsko is a C, says she, uh, Sean. They did her dirty. Ritsko has to be a C, says Richard. All she did was cut her hair. Sean says Ritsko C because I didn't like her voice actor change. <laughs> Ritsko is C, says Sean, because she said zero was the closest thing to think. <laughs> now, by the way, it's like the cheapest excuse to justify why she could not uh, synchronize with an Evangelion unit is because she's zero. <laughs> he was zero. I think zero is the closest to infinity. <laughs> it reminds me of Homer Simpson. I don't know why. Oh, uh, say it is true. It's like uh, the the polar opposite. Maybe I hope I'm not wrong. Rich co equal die impact. Says so Sean. Oh, says I did a little research and it's it is in Maya mathematics it is state that zero is the polar opposite of <laughs> die impacts. Capital C says Richard. If it wasn't for for the spear of Gaius, I will give her a C. And the reason, I mean, she's not an F because she has a lot of screen time and her role is relevant enough not to be an F. And it wasn't for, for the Spear of Gaius, she would have been a C. But the Spear of Gaius, or more stupid than it is, in my opinion, it is very relevant for the end of the story. Now the question is, could Maya would have created the Spear of Gaius without Ritzko? Probably not. Probably not. They needed Ritsko. She's the only one with the experience 
and the knowledge to do it. She actually says she was very well informed about the human instrumentality. That's another thing. In Genesis Evangelion, she knows about everything that is happening at the same level as um, as Koso, as Gendo, right? Almost. More than Misato. But in Revealed, it seems that Ritsuko and Misato know the same since the start. So they are the, uh, and, uh, in the sense of knowledge, they are the same level. Right? So she was downgraded on that as well, because in Neon Genesis Evangelion, she knew more. Now she doesn't know. But she does say on 3 plus 1 when the Eva Imaginary is uh, rising, she says something like, um, that's the Eva Imaginary. She said it to Midori, right? She says to Midori uh, that that's the Eva Imaginary. Uh, she didn't thought that it could exist. So she read about it. She knew about it, but she doubted that it existed. So she knew a lot. That's it. So for me, it's a B just because of Agayos. If I had to put a B minus, I would give her a B minus. But if it wasn't for that, it would be a C. Let's move on. Kaji. It feels like Regarding Kaji, since the Kaji had a more important role in reveal that he had in Neon Genesis Evangelion, but because we are caught 14 years, we don't see him in action. So all we get from Kaji is the second movie and some glimpses on the last movie. He does create Wiley. He does take a sacrifice to stop the, the third impact. We see it from Misato's memory. He does bring uh, Mari to Tokyo 3. So he has many, many important roles. Right? Now, in New Genesis Evangelion, he was working for Sele, he was working for the Japanese government, and she was working for Gendi Kari. <clears throat> and, um, and he, because he has, uh, he had a, a, a good time with Misato. <laughs> he gave Misato information that ultimately put Shinji in Unit 1 in the end of Evangelion, right? Because he gave Misato knowledge. Now, what Misato did with that knowledge? Well, not a lot, because she couldn't prevent it uh, at the end of uh, the third impact, right? Uh, but at least Misato died knowing the truth, knowing part of the truth. Because of Kaji. Other than that, Kaji's role in Neon Genesis Evangelion is pretty much irrelevant, to tell you the truth. You could take Kaji out of Neon Genesis Evangelion. The story could have played the same. His relationship with Asuka never led to nowhere. To tell you the truth. His relationship with Misato and nowhere because he died. Misato died also. He did save Koso from selling. But that's that's it. I mean what else he did? He he gave the the information to the Japanese agent, they did nothing. Misato couldn't do anything. So, I mean, he does, he does speak with Shinji and convince him in episode 19 to pilot unit 
one and the feature well. That didn't happen in Reveal, but it did it instead. But his role, I think, in, in Reveal has more impact in the story overall that... I mean, in, in Neon Genesis Evangelion, he was just a spy that... He was a triple spy. He was working for three different factions. And, uh, and at the end, he accomplished nothing. I did like him in New Genesis Evangelion. He's a very cool character. But I think in Reveal, he he's portrayed way better. But because we don't have the 14 years of time scale, we don't know until what's end. All we see is what he left. And that's Wily. And even though the Wily didn't save the world, because... I mean, they created the spirit of Gaia, but they never, they were not able to stop Gendy Kari, was Shinji. Right? They even lost control of the wonder. <laughs> right? I mean, come on. Um, if it wasn't for Wily, there were probably no uh, hex pillars to keep uh, life. They wouldn't have uh, created an arc with all the this, the the DNAs for for a future, right? That Misato saw on Triple One, all those boxes on the Wonder. So Kaji had a huge impact in the world. I'm gonna put Kaji an A because his actions in Repeal were enormous. Huge! He doesn't appear in the first movie. And he doesn't appear in the third movie. <laughs> and still, he did a lot. He did way more than these four. <laughs> so probably if we get a movie in the future about the 14 years time skip, Kaji is going to have a lot of script. Because he had a, a lot of things to do. Mr. says he had a watermelon farm. That's right. A watermelon film built, right? He did sacrifice himself because of his watermelons. Uh, Richard says, uh, now Ryoji, how does he stop the third impact? Clearly he can't pilot an EVA, so it's not him in Mark 6. So what the heck did... Because Gendry Kari, uh, th this is my interpretation, okay? So Gendry Kari explains on Triplos 1 to Shinji that every wish entitles a sacrifice, okay? So for each impact to happen the way they want, they have to ask for a wish. I know it sounds stupid, but that's how he explain it. So Gendry Kari's wish is to reunite with Yui. And the sacrifice is the world, <laughs> right? Um, I believe that, that uh, Kaji sacrificing himself uh, for the wish to stop the third impact. That, that's my interpretation. We, we don't know, really. But that's how I see it. Uh, Sean says, it's unclear how he stopped it, and it's unclear if he can pilot or not, in my opinion. I heard somewhere he controlled it remotely, but don't know where that is from. That's right. Who was piloting Mark uh, Mark 6? We assume it was Kaoru, because it was Kaoru unit, right? But we don't know, because we don't see him piloting in, in the in Misato's memories. But it was established in Triple Plus One that Kaoru and, and, and Kaji met each other. The Borna Coder says uh, his advice to Shinji didn't do much. Reveal Kaji as the main character sounds amazing. Yeah. It was teased by Hideki Anno that uh, the project they were developed uh, for that time skip that never turned into a, a real project. Uh, the main characters were going to be Gendry, Kari, Koso, Kaoru, and Kaji. 
those four were going to be the main characters. Sean says, Reveal doesn't seem to have the same lore when it comes to piloting. That's true, but they are still, all of them are children. Richard says, the wish theory makes sense, I guess, because I never understood why Shinji was going to kill himself with the spear. But now you say that, I guess it makes sense, kill himself to achieve his wish. Correct. So Shinji was going to sacrifice himself to give all his friends. That's the reason why he was giving his friends everything that, the best ending that he could without him. Uh, you know, Gendo with his mother in, this, in a way, and uh, then Kaoru with Kaji, <laughs> Asuka with Ken Ken, <laughs> with her body, uh, Rey in a world without Ivas, in which she could be whatever she wanted to be. He was going to sacrifice himself, but then it was Jui and Gendo, the ones that sacrificed for him. <clears throat> Orlando, welcome to the stream. Oh, says, well, a wish requires sacrifice, isn't it? Yeah. So in the second impact, the sacrifice should have been uh, Dr. Katsuragi. Right? So in the second impact, Dr. Katsuragi. In the third impact, I guess I was going to be Shinji. In the near third impact, it, could, it didn't happen. Or oh, it was Ray. Um, then in the third impact was Kaji and in the additional impact it was going to be Gendo and then was going to be Shinji and ended up being Yui <clears throat> Richard says saying that then since Yui and Gendo killed themselves instead does that mean they don't exist in the new world? yes, that's exactly what it means Oh, says like how Jesus cleared humanity's sins through dying with the spear. Spear of destiny, guys. Yeah, long enough, correct. Sean says, yeah, and near their impact, which he was saving Ray and he sacrificed the world. Correct. And there is, uh, is uh, there's a plot hole in, three, in, in Reveal Q because uh, mm, Kaoru, <laughs> who was there, according to 3 plus 1 lore, uh, uh, he was there when Kaji died. Um, he accused Shinji of causing the third impact when Shinji was in stasis, <laughs> right? During the third, third impact, Shinji caused the near third impact, didn't cause the third impact. Bokauru says on the third movie that Shinji was uh, the one who caused the third impact. How it happened, I had no idea because we don't know, it never shows. All right. Give me a second, guys. Okay, I'm back. Uh, Sean says, I believe he was um, manipulating Shinji to get him to try and fix everything. Maybe, maybe. <clears throat> maybe. O says, uh, I did happen inside TGE and the universe, so maybe Gendo and Yui doesn't exist anymore. I, I think that those that died, they didn't come back. Even though there is this that um, Kaji, Kaoru, and Misato are alive. Why? Because Kaoru agreed to with, to go with Kaji and tend their watermelons with Misato, right? So maybe there's a world that Shinji created in which them three are together with Kaji Jr. and who knows who. 
Mm. Okay, let's move on. Because we're still... <laughs> We're we're heading into the main characters, right? Kao, uh, again, the is the first one. Kaji could be considered one. Let's go with Kaoru. Uh, Kaoru, in Neon Genesis Evangelion, he has only 16 minutes screen time. Okay? And he became a fan favorite really, really fast. And uh, Anno wanted to revisit his story. That's why he gave him and Shinji reveal kill. And the reason we don't have the movie in the time skip is because Anno wanted to create a story between Kaoru and Shinji. So you can blame Kaoru and Shinji's relationship for that. Uh, however, uh, Kaoru's story in in Reveal is more relevant and and more important and better developed than it was on Neon Genesis Evangelion. He appears in in all of the movies. Okay. In concert to Asuka, doesn't appear on the first one. Mari doesn't appear on the first one either. Kaoru does appear in the first one. He appears on the second one, he appears on the third one, he appears on the last one. And if there's a fifth movie for the time skip, he's gonna be there too. So he's probably like Gendo <laughs> appearing in all of the of the movies. Koso, I guess. Amisato. Um I did like Kaoru in Reveal. In the third movie, his his portrayal is very strong, in my opinion. I didn't like the Book of Life storyline, uh, all that BS from the Triple One. His name is in the Book of Life, and whoever appears with him, he will be living with him forever or whatever. <laughs> so Shinji takes and put Kaji's name in there. <laughs> So that was weak. But other than that, I did like that he took the reins of the train after Gendo disappeared. It was pretty clever. And when he appears uh, next to Shinji in 3 plus 1, when Asuka and Mari uh, leave his room, right? Because it's, we are heading into, into the last part of the film, he appears as a vision, right? To Shinji. That was very clever as well. Reveal Q will always be Kaoru's film. That, by the way, Asuka didn't have a film like Kaoru did. <laughs> so, so it's funny because, in my opinion, the two biggest fandoms, uh, the, the two strongest fandoms within Evangelion are Asuka's fans and Kaoru fans. And Kaoru fans are always complaining about Asuka, but Kaoru did have a movie. In reveal. Asuka didn't. Asuka didn't appear in the first movie and Kaoru appeared in the four of them. So don't don't give me that jazz. Okay. Kaoru roles in, in reveal is more important than in Neon Genesis Evangelion. And I did like Kaoru better. This Kaoru better than Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, Kaoru Lowest, yes, I'm thinking of putting Kaoru here with Ken. Because he had the third movie. And he's really good on the third movie. How he dies. And all his dialogues. I mean, some of them are coded. <laughs> but, but he's, he's such a cool... Uh, interpretation of Kaoru. Uh, Kaoru in Neon Genesis Evangelion says the burning coder uh, felt like a stroke of genius too late. Yes, it became it came too late, and that's why Anno wanted to to revisit that. He gave uh, the whole film to Shinji and Kaoru. 
And it has more personality because the Kaoru in Neon Genesis Evangelion in episode 24, uh, that Kaoru doesn't feel like a human. He behaves like, I don't know, like, like well, like Ray. <laughs> <laughs> right? He goes around staring at people, saying weird stuff. But people like it. I like that. I, I like uh, Reveal, uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion episode 24 Kaoru. But Reveal Kaoru is better. Has more personality. It's, it has more screen time, more development, more important to the story as a whole. So, Code is one of the biggest winners of, of Rebuild. It's not as good as Gendo, which is still S. It's S tier. Rebuild Kaoru. Kaoru maybe is the closest friend Shinji had. Correct. O says that. Yeah. Kaoru is one of the biggest, biggest, biggest winners together with Gendo. And Kaji, if we get the fifth movie and we are shown what he did, he automatically becomes mess. Because his impact in the story is huge. Huge. Uh, Sean says, uh, Kaoru Ninja says Evangelion was meant to be an alien, I think. He probably had more time to integrate with Lilin in Reveal, or they wanted to change that. Kaoru and the moon thing was conceptualized way before Reveal uh, second movie or the first movie. The first, second movie, no, the first movie is when she, he appears on the moon, right? The first time we see him on the moon. That was conceptualized for original episode 25 and 26, but they never did it. They did what they did. But Anno was conceptualizing on putting Kaoru as the last angel coming down from the moon. That was going to be the original ending of the show. But they changed that for many reasons. And then we have the end of Evangelion. But Kaoru coming from the moon was something that Anno conceptualized back in the day. And never executed until rebuilt. All right, let's move on. Then we have Ray Q. Ray Q appears only in the third movie and in the first act of Three Plus One. In the third movie, tentative name Ray Ayanami uh, saves Shinji from the Wonder. Um, and then she's wandering around Nerve. In the last part of the film, she has an epiphany. Uh, who is the one that I think he herself, right? He or, or was Mari, I don't remember, uh, ejected her entry, entry block from Mark 9. That's the reason why she she was able to be saved and appears on the first act of three plus one. And three plus one, she has in Village Street. She has a great arc, in my opinion. She, uh, you know, the fish out of the water story always work really good with Ray. I didn't like how she went out. I think it's ridiculous to tell you the truth. And uh, if there's a counterpart of Ray Q in Neon Genesis Evangelion, probably will be Ray 3. But Ray 3 had a more important role. I mean, she ended in the world in the end of Evangelion. Ray Q didn't. So all that, for all that Ray Q worked in Rebuild was to confuse Shinji. That's it. What was her other role? She didn't have another role. Um, uh, 
Let's see. Richard says, Kaoru had the ability to control Aidan base EVAs without having to pilot them. I wonder why he never used this ability in Rebuild. That's right, he controlled EVA 2, right? And the reason why he doesn't go into EVA 2, he says it, is because there's a soul inside. Whose soul? Asuka's mother. So he doesn't go into EVA 2 to go into, uh, into the Terminal Dogma. Now, you, uh, uh, Asuka's mother was sl asleep. He says it. He says it in episode 24. He doesn't have that ability. That's, that's true. That's true. But the Evangelion units, they, they behave a little bit different than me and Genesis Evangelion. Reiki is an S. I love her, says Sean. Richard says, whose soul is in Reiki considering Lily's remaining unit one? No one. Reiki doesn't have a soul. It's a soulless clone. Kaoru says it to Shinji. Her soul resides in another place. Uh, he says that when the, they are descending into the dogma, Kaoru and Shinji into unit 13, and uh, and, uh, and and the Ma and Mark Nine above them. That's where she has started to think, right? Like, what I am, what am I, or uh, I'm a doll, right? I do like her in Creep Plus One First Act. I don't see how she's relevant the story other than uh, uh, bother Shinji with the previous Ray, his mother and all that, which is pretty weak, in my opinion, on how it was executed. In Q, that interaction worked better, but in Triple One it failed. I didn't like how she died. I think it was unnecessary. The reasoning behind it is ridiculous because Shinji never had a strong relationship with this Ray. So Gendo killing her and making Shinji um, wake up of his dream or whatever he's into that in the first act. Um, but I did like the whole Ray Fresh Out of the Water story in Q and in Triple One, and I did like her in Q, the first act. No, that's the, the second act, the one with Shinji is, is around, walking around um, Nerf. Other than that, I don't see that she had a big story, storyline, or a major impact in the world. Even when Shinji is uh, giving wishes away, she doesn't appear. She's gone. Gone, gone. Gone. <clears throat> so... Let's see what the chat is saying. Uh... Sean says Ray ejected herself in order in order because she was inspired to do what she wanted. That's correct. That's 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 correct. Yes. Uh, Mary ejects Shinji. I don't know why I was thinking that Mary was ejecting Ray. No, Mary ejected was Shinji. Uh, Sean says I don't think Ray Q has a soul. She doesn't. O says uh, when Shinji saves Ray 3 from Serrell, she remains inside Unit 1 without actually merging with it like Jui did. Well, because Jui is already there. How many souls can an Evangelion unit have at the same time? The only one that can have one more, more than one is Unit 13. It needs two. Kaoru says it. That's the reason why it's a dual pilot Evangelion unit. So she didn't merge like Jui did, 
what where the soul is located within the Evangelion unit? Where is it? In the core. That's why Shinji was attacking the core. That's why when the the, the exposure to the core is so is so delicate in Neon Genesis Evangelion when when they got uh, get deep into the the core, right? Because the the soul is in the core. Joey Kari went into the core. We are shown that. We are not shown that in Neon Genesis Evangelion, but we are shown that on Reveal. She gets into the core herself. Uh, Sean says, uh, wait. And uh, it's not rate 3 uh, uh, in, in reveal. It's just plain Ray. <laughs> the one of the first two movies. Richard says, oh, so Ray Q is kind of like the nobodies from <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Uh, they don't have hearts when they clearly have hearts. Sean says uh, she wasn't plot relevant in 4, but she was an audience surrogate for world building. The Burning Corridor says the middle part of Q played like a theater performance. Makes sense she acts like a set piece. Sean says in Reveal, it seems entry blocks can contain souls. It's weird. Yeah, because I know it's weird, but that's what they are hinting with Asuka's original. In in, but they don't change it that much because we are shown how Joey went into the core of Unit One. Uh, let's see. Uh, Oh, says maybe inside the entry block where Shinji wants Hawk Re Rishi remains near Shinji's heart like uh, he, she's near Unit 1 course per heart. Double the worst throw says, but what happens when you eat the S2 engine core? It, it's, um, well, according to, to what we saw on episode 19, you transfer the S2 engine. Uh, unit 1 after that event doesn't need a power cord anymore because he has the S2 engine inside it. Or you're asking what happened to the core? But it comes, the S2 engine gets into the core. The core be becomes the primary source of energy and they need it in order for Jui to actually became, uh, become uh, autonomous. Unit one, when it's descending into the dogma with uh, with Kaoru, it's not doesn't have an, uh, a power core. Unit one in the end of Evangelion doesn't have a power core. Unit two does, but not unit one. The unit absorbs, yes, yeah, so, uh, you know, so. But I think that the question is what happened to the core when when you eat the S two engine. So if the soul is in the core. What happens to the soul? Well, the core absorbs both. Double War says, uh, I was asking in regards to soul core. Yeah, exactly. So they need both. That's the goal. That was why Gendo was happy. In episode 20, in episode 19, at the end of episode 19, that he says it all starts here. That's why he needed to recover the, 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 the core of some shell, episode 4. No, episode. episode 5. 
and he sent it to Germany. And then the Germans developed it into a, a, an artificial S2 engine and gave it to Unit 4. And Unit 4 exploded in Nevada, rejected the, the S2 engine, the artificial S2 engine. But it worked out at the end because they put it in the mass production Evangelion units that doesn't have a power core. And they have wings. <laughs> so, so at the end, they could do it. And they replaced the soul with Kaoru sentry blocks. Kaoru dummy blocks. Sele did that. Something similar uh, Gendikari needed to do. He wanted originally to do the Ray dummy plot and the S2 engine. But the way that he did it was different because at the end he needed to he he used Shinji as the soul and uh and then the then unit one eight and S2 engine. Okay. So Ray Q. I'm gonna give Ray Q a B. She wasn't relevant to the story, to tell you the truth. But the second act of Ray of Reveal Q, as someone says on the chat, it played out as a as a theater play. It, which is true. I agree with that idea. And she played a role. It wasn't a very relevant one, but still a role. And in the first act of Reveal Q was very strong. It is one of the best Ray portrayal overall. Now, the downside is that she doesn't have a role, really. And uh, I didn't like her death. But, but I still believe that it's at the same level as these four. I still believe she is at the same level because she did save CNG from Wonder. And that was a crucial moment. Double the word says, did they drop the whole Nebuchadnezzar thing in reveal or was it still important? Well, again, you gotta consume it. That's why she he didn't have eyes. We talked about the key of Nebuchadnezzar early. Uh what did I say about the key of Nebuchadnezzar? Yeah, that um, there were, there is how they are presenting it is that there were more than one key of Nebuchadnezzar because Ka Kaji in the second movie calls it the spare one. And that's the reason why we never see Celes um, as uh, faces, right? Because they consume key of Nebuchadnezzar so, or something like that. And they kept a spare. And that spare is the one that Kaji gave to Gendry Kari. And then Gendry Kari thanked Sele in, in the third movie because they quit their humanity. Uh, and, and then in the last movie, Gendry Kari said, after consuming the key of Nebuchadnezzar, that he, that he, he quit his, his humanity because of consuming the key of Nebuchadnezzar. So the key of Nebuchadnezzar plays a major role. And it seems that there was more than one. Being three, I seen three plus one. Maybe the other way around. <clears throat> I like her better on three plus one. To tell you the truth. Uh, but I also like her in in the second, in the third movie. I didn't like her to put it on A. But I think she was more relevant than these five. It's hard to me to see Sele as a C, but man, they are barely in the... They're, I mean, their actions are relevant. They are barely there, and, and Gendo plays them as he wants, even worse than Neon Genesis Evangelion. So they don't feel like they do anything, not like Kaji. Kaji, even though that we don't show, we are not shown how, what Kaji does, his actions are even more important than Cell. Because all that is happening in 3 plus 1 is because of Kendrick Addis, not because of Cell. 
on Nerf's part. On Whitey's part is because of Kai. So I'm going to put her here because she's more relevant than these fives. But I want to stress that she doesn't have a role, in my opinion, in Reveal, Ray Q, and, or a major role. And the only thing that she did that changed the course of the story was to save Shinji from, Wiley, from the wonder in the beginning of Reveal Q. That's it. So she did have a crucial moment, but, and I like her as a character, but that's it. She's getting probably a B minus if I, if I have to write a B minus, more than a C plus, B minus. All right, let's move on. We still have these characters to go. Mari, <laughs> this is going to be fun. Mari is one of those characters, I'm in the minority, all right, of the fandom regarding Mari. Uh, I'm with a small, tiny group that believes that I like Mari, but I think that she could have been better, all right? Mari has a, has a strong fandom right now. It's not as strong as Asuka or Rei or Misato or Kaoru, but it's strong. And uh, Mari is one of those characters that you either love or hate. People that love her, love her no matter what. They don't care. They, they feel like Mari is perfect. The way that she was portrayed, the meta aspect, uh, she was, uh, you know, she wasn't a, um, a symbolic character and that's the only way that you can understand her and you cannot improve the character because that was the role of the character that's what her fandom sees her right her haters <laughs> think that all of that is bs and uh and she's a horrible character uh, she disrespects Kaoru because she was showing her uh, her breast on the screen when Kaoru died. Uh, all she does is uh, bouncing her boobs around. Uh, she likes Shinji for no reason. Uh, what else? <laughs> She's the same age as Candy Kari, even older sometimes. Some people say that. Um, she doesn't have a strong background or character development. So as you see, the, the two biggest groups regarding Mari, they either love her or hate her. I like her. I welcome her inclusion in the story. But I think that she could have been portrayed better. The Burning Coder says, Dean Anu want Mari to kill Eva, correct? So she's a meta character, right? But maybe the maybe maybe they could have executed it differently. It does she doesn't have to be meta or a symbolic character to kill the story. You can give her a background. You can give her um, a story, reasons, motivations. They give her some of them. Her background was that she went to college with Gendo and Yui. Um, In Reveal and Three Plus One, she she had a major role in the third movie, uh, the fourth movie in the third act. Major, massive, right? Because of the overlapping capabilities of Eva U Unit Eight, she was able to consume the four Aiden vessels. 
uh, navigate the anti-universe, save Shinji. So she has a massive, massive role in the third, in the final movie, the fourth movie. She's very important. And I get why people love her. I get it. I see it. But me, as the type of person that I am, I think it, it could have been better. But I can see why people like her. I do see it. And I also see why people hate her. <laughs> So I see both sides and the way that I feel is what I just said. I think she's a cool character. I like her design. I welcome her. Uh, I have no issues on her role in the third act of the movie. I didn't, I, I, I didn't care that much that she ended up with Shinji. But Uh, I think that if we we could have had a little bit more of character development, it would have been better for her. Okay. Sean says, Mary is a high B. In my opinion, she is crucial, but we didn't see her enough or enough of her. Richard says they introduced Mary as as uh, thought. Thought? <laughs> thought. Uh, there was uh, something special to her, similar to the introduction of Kaoru, uh, but there was nothing to her. She was she uh, she's what Rey was in Star Wars: Last Jedi. Ooh, <laughs> some people are not gonna like that comparison. <laughs> uh, oh, says maybe Mary is there, so the two fandoms, Asushin and Reishin. Stop arguing. They got troll. Big time. <laughs> they got troll. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And th the other thing is that I cannot compare her to anything because Mari didn't appear on New Genesis on that. So of course it's easy to me these three, these four, these four. And this one, because I can compare them to their alternative versions of New Genesis Evangelion. Or their counterparts. But Mary, I cannot do that. Which is a good thing and a bad thing, because th the good thing is that I'm going to rate her just as she was portraying Reveal without comparisons. The bad thing is that in case that I didn't like her that much, there's not an alternative version that can save her. <laughs> uh, Sean says, I have to leave before my guest girl Misato. I'm sorry to hear that, Sean. Uh, all says I'm once as Ashishin shipper, but I'm more happy with the fact that my boy Shinji finally happy. All right, Marita didn't appear on the first movie. She appears on the second movie only at the beginning. She destroys the third angel, destroys Unit Five. She disappears. She falls on Shinji, smells him, disappears. She hijacks Unit Two. Fights uh, Seruel, she fails. She finds Shinji, convinces him to fight. So she's basically uh, replacing Kaji on that part in the second movie, and that's it. The third movie, she appears on the on the opening act. Uh, she's a background character. She doesn't do anything. Asuka does everything on space. Uh, then she fights Mark Nine, trying to prevent that um, uh, that Ray Q saves. Shinji, she fails, and then she disappears, uh, as as all 
the wonder. And then on the last part, she appears again with uh, with um, with Asuka and Misato, and uh, and then uh, Sean says bye bye, Mick Sans, uh, bye uh, <laughs> Mick Sans, yeah. uh, bye Sean. Thank you for coming to the stream. Hang out. So in in the final part of Rate of Reveal Kill. He saved Shinji from Unit 13. And that's it. She's the only pilot that uh, Wonder was able to retrieve at the end of Reveal Q because uh, Asuka, Shinji, and Ray Q uh, became stranded. And then on the last movie, she has the Paris sequence. Again, another, another uh, beginning of film. She doesn't appear on the first act. In the in village three, in the second part uh, of the se second act, she um, she has these conversations with Asuka, and uh, and then visit Shinji with Asuka, and then go into uh, into the battlefield fighting all the Mark Sevens. Then she devours Mark Nine. Take Shinji with her uh, to, into the anti universe. Convinces Fujitsuki Koso to give up the the ships and the Evas so she can save Shinji and uh, save the world. According to her, it's because it's Jewish will. She does just that, and then she takes the uh, Spirit of Gaius into the anti universe uh, to Shinji. And uh, and what else? She ends up with Shinji in the same stage of the pitch. That. So her role was impressive in Three Plus One. She didn't appear in the first movie. In the second and third movies, her role was pretty much irrelevant, to tell you the truth. But then her impact in Three Plus One was so big, so big that it made her uh, a very important character. I do feel that she's better than this fight. I don't... I feel that she's better than she. Sakura. Then the only reason is in A is because on how impressive, on how limited screen time she had, how she create an impact, right? As a new character in counterpart of these new three, right? That's the reason why uh, Toji's sister is in A, in my opinion. But I would, I would put Mary the same level as Kaji. And there are many things that we are not told about Mary yet. We don't know what Mary did in the time skip. We know it was important. We don't know what Mary did before with uh, uh, at college with Gendo and, and Yui. We don't know any of those things. So she undeniably, undeniably was very impactful to the story. And I do like her. I don't love her. But I do like her. I think she could have been better developed. But I do like her. <laughs> so, yeah, I have to put her at the same level as Kaji. Because maybe she had a major, a, a more a bigger impact than Kaji did. Maybe. We don't know that. Not yet. So Mari sent me. Oh, my cell phone. Give me a second.
So I'm three hours into the stream. <laughs> this is the longest stream yet. I still have four characters to go. So let's speed it up, okay? Because I still have to talk about what we are going to do next week. <clears throat> uh, Misato. Uh, Misato is one of the four main characters in Neon Genesis Evangelion, right? Uh, Shinji, Asuka, Rei, and Misato. Those are the four main characters in Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, in Rebuild, she is not a main character at the same level as Shinji. Uh, she might be at the same level as Asuka, but not at the same level as Rei, in my opinion. So she didn't... She's not at the same level as Misato Katsuragi from Junior Genesis Evangelion, I'm sorry. Uh, the Burning Color says, could developing her character miss the point of the symbolic importance? Probably. Perhaps. Perhaps. And that's what uh, Mari's fans base their arguments on. Uh, I disagree. But that's my opinion. Okay. And maybe because as a symbolic character, she, she can be very subjective, right? So you can give the interpretation that you want as you want to see her. I personally... Personally, me, I don't like that. <laughs> but I can see why some people like it, and I respect it. Because, I mean, Irekiano is not the first person to do this. This has been done before in other formats, in theater, in, in literature, in, in movies. So it's not the first time. Sean says that developing Mary uh doesn't need to mean giving her trauma back for a second <laughs> all right so misato in neon genesis evangelion is a story on the electra complex and uh and how some adults don't want to became don't want to become adults and be behave like childs, right? She has many issues. She's alcoholic. She's a mess. She doesn't know how to cook. A woman in her 30s that is alone. Uh, according to the to Japanese tradition, that's terrible, <laughs> right? Uh, so it's a story. You go through a story from a story from episode one to episode twenty six, and then into the end of the manga. At the same level of a study of what Shinji is, of what Asuka is, and of what Rei is. In Reveal, we get nothing of sorts. There's no Electra complex. We get a bit of a study of of how she accepts to be Shinji's mother, not. <laughs> Her real son's mother, and uh, her ending is is an heroic ending again. Her role in the first film was the best interpretation of her, and there's a reason why they gave her this outfit. And the reason is that they wanted to do a counterpart to Gendry Gatti. That's why Gendry Gatti had the visors on the third movie. And Misato had a visor also. So she was going to be like a counterpart to Gendry Kari. Right? In 3 plus 1, when Ritsuko shoots him and his, uh, his visor fails, he doesn't have eyes. When Midori shoots, uh, when uh, Sakura shoots Misato, she drops her visor and she has eyes. So all of those things have meanings, right? 
Uh, but that's the only thing, the only thing new that they tried to add to uh, Misato. Misato would have died with Kaji if she wasn't pregnant. She would have gone with Kaji. That's very well established by Ritsuko. And I, as a Misato fan, I have no doubt that that would have been the case. Uh, Misato Katsuragi. In Neon Genesis Evangelion is an S plus 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 plus. <laughs> right? Misato Reveal is an A. Uh, Sean Cameron says, I love the symbolism of her letting her hair back down when she's alone in the wonder. Right? I mean, they did good stuff with Misato. And I love her ending in Rebuild. I love when she and Shinji uh, have a hug. Oh, that is great. But if she's not as deep as Misato Katsuragi Neon Genesis Evangelion, I'm sorry, she's not. Cool character, but a downgrade of a masterful interpretation in Genesis Evangelion, in my opinion. Still didn't disappoint. I'm not mad about her. I think it's a different Misato. It's a light Misato. It's Misato light. Diet Misato. <laughs> Without all the darkness. Okay. Ray. Ray just needed two movies to be better than Ray 2 in Neon Genesis Evangelion, in my opinion. And it's one of the few characters that for me is an improvement. Ray is better than Ray 2, and I'm going to explain why. Ray right to a story in Neon Genesis Evangelion goes down to four episodes. I know it's, she appears a lot, but she also don't appear a lot. <laughs> okay. Ray right to a story is reduced to episode five. Episode, no, sorry, episode, yeah, episode five. Episode 6, then episode 13, is episode 13, episode 14, weaving a story, the second part, then episode 23, and that's it, that's right too, four episodes. Episode 5 is the episode in which Shinji enters her apartment right? and see her naked. Episode 6 is Ramiel episode. Weaving a story, the first part uh, is uh, it's a recap on the first half of the season. And the second part, we see some of Rey because she is <clears throat> uh, synchronizing with um, with Eva Zero again. Right? So she has an introspec introspection of her. And then episode 23, when she dies. That's Rey to a story. In episode 21 is Ray 1. And in episode 24 and the end of Evangelion is Ray 3. So Ray 2 story in Neon Genesis Evangelion is just that. Wonderful arc. Love her. A lot. Episode 23 is one of the best episodes of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Her death. But she doesn't have a, a, a... 
an arc that is so explored as we do see in Reveal 1 and Second Moon. Ray, and it's a different Ray to Ray 2. She's more relaxed. She op opens up quicker. It feels natural. She tries to get closer to Asuka, even though the Asuka hates her. She invites Asuka to the dinner party with Shinji. Then she stands up to Asuka in the elevator. She doesn't let Asuka to slap her. And then she calls Asuka to thank her for uh, volunteering for Unit 3. And then the third act of the second movie is a masterpiece. With Shinji trying to enter into the core and all that. Ray in Reveal is an improvement of Ray 2 that is already a, a strong character. All these three characters are strong in Neo Genesis Evangelion and in Reveal are better. I love her. I, I love her interpretation of Reveal. It was really strong. I would have loved not to kill her as the way they did. And uh, nor Asuka and give both of them an arc together. Both of them being clones, trying to understand what they are, cope together, and all that, it would have been great. But no, they decided to put Asuka in Unit 3. <laughs> so, <laughs> we don't have that. Uh, Sean says Ray was an S, easy, yes, it's an easy S. And it's a better interpretation than Neon Genesis 7. Just as Kaori just says that they were very strong. They were very strong, very strong. Now they are stronger. All right, Asuka. She can have me, Asuka. Oh. She can have me, Asuka. Uh, so you, Asuka. First of all, let me say that Soryu Asuka is better. <laughs> okay? I'm not gonna lie here and, and try to justify the unjustifiable. Soryu Asuka is such a good character. Shikinami Asuka is, is not even close to Soryu Asuka. And I'm gonna explain why. Again. <laughs> okay? So, Soryu Asuka is basically the counterpart of Shinji, right? Uh, but from a girl's perspective, Shinji is the introvert, Asuka is extrovert. Shinji is good, Asuka is evil, in the Sundere type of evil. Uh, uh, Shinji lost his mother, Asuka lost his mother. Um, they go through through these experiences, they both have their their father, but they don't they don't understand their father very well. Shinji's relationship with Kendo is more explored than Asuka's relationship with her father. Um, Asuka goes deep into a depression because her mother in Unit Two ignores her because Asuka rejects her, while Shinji embraces her his mother in Unit One. And so Yuasuka has a, a character development that is great character development. It's a great study uh, of a character. So Shikinami didn't appear on the first movie. On the second movie, she kills an angel for her own, of by her own, right? That is a uh, clock yell. And uh, and then she helps Shinji to stop Sahakiel. 
then she disappears in Unit 3. Uh, she, well, she had all the, 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 the interactions with Ray. Right? And they are really good. I did like them. A like that. From both. From Ray and from Shikinami. But then she disappears at the end of her second act, and that's it. In the third movie, she appears at the at the beginning. She appears at the end. She stops Mark Nine. She cannot stop the uh, Shinji on Unit Thirteen. She cannot stop uh, the Twelfth Angel. She saves Shinji from the entry block. In the fourth movie, she takes Shinji to to the to village tree. She helps Shinji. She forces feed him, feed him, and uh, and then take him to the to the wonder. Um, she has these weird interactions, say confessing her love to Shinji, or that she used to love her. And then she fights all the Mark Sevens and try to defeat Unit Thirteen, taking her uh, the angel there, her 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 seal out of her eye. And um, and she fails. <laughs> she fails <laughs> because that was Candy Cat's plan, right? Uh, for her to turn into an angel so he can. He, uh, unit 13 awakes. Right? And then she's gone. Uh, until Shinji saves her on the beach. Then that's it. There's nothing there. The The only thing that we get from Shikinami Asuka is, is a mini arc on the second movie in which she's trying to to accept others at the, at the first part of the second act. That's it. In the third movie, we don't get a lot of her. And on the fourth movie, the first part I really like, the first act, the village thing with the village part with Asuka there. I like everything with Asuka there. One of the things that the changes that I would have made is, is instead of Kensuke showing Shinji around, Maybe it would have been Asuka instead. Asuka presenting uh, Kaji Jr. to Shinji and all that. I think it would have been played way better. Uh, instead of Kensuke. And uh, that's it. I mean, what else we get? We get how she uh, fought because she wants to, to be better than the other clones and be a Eva pilot that was the meaning of her life. Why have I haven't said about Shikinami that I haven't seen before? Uh, I haven't said before. Uh, the Burning Color says, as well, Shen says, bye bye for real this time. <laughs> bye, Sean. Uh, the boarding color says Asuka dominated in, in, in Genesis Evangelion. It makes a little sense. She less important in reveal. O says uh, Asuka best girl. <laughs> uh, which Asuka? Sigma male variant says, okay, I'm back. Uh, did you really give out on S and Ray? She has no personality at all. A literal blank slate. Well, I, I gave uh, like a 20 minutes interpretation on why I'm giving Right, and S tier. And Kaoru, what you being out? You being out for a while? You better uh, <laughs> rewatch the stream because if I go over that again, I'm never gonna end this. Uh, but yeah, Ray Q is happy. <coughs> So Asuka, in my opinion, is one of the biggest losers of Rebuild compared to Soju. If Soju as if if Asuka were in the same position as Mary, in the sense that she didn't have Soju to be compared with, probably, probably, probably here an A, A minus. 
but Soryu is such a strong and good character that Mei Shikinami looks stupid. <laughs> or maybe not stupid, but really, really weak in comparison. I'm gonna give her a B. She's more relevant to the story. She's a B plus. But her actions, everything that she does, she fails in Rebuild. She doesn't accomplish anything other than killing the Clock Angel. And well, saving Shinji. <laughs> but um, in, in at the end of Rebuild, third movie, I'm bringing him into, into the village. You know, but, uh, other than that... <sighs> And then having Soryu, who is an S plus, is so so unfair. Now, to be clear, she's a B plus. She maybe Koso is the only one in this tier that is at the same level as Shikinami. The rest of them are B or B minus. Um, let's see um, Sigma Male says in, in the last few episodes of Asuka play little to no role Asuka after episode 22 her story is over until the end of Evangelion but did, she did have some exploration on episode 25 of the, of the TV show but after episode 22, and I, when I did my previous tier list, uh, talking about the episodes, I said why episode 22 for me was the, the weakest of Asuka's episode because of how it was presented. And it, at the end of episode 22, which is the episode of Arael, which, um, you know, she's attacked by the angel and that's it. I mean, after that, she cannot sink. She's put into the Eve again in episode 23, but she cannot pilot it. Um, and in episode 24, she's on the bath, in the bathtub. Right? Uh, some people say, as I do, I do believe that she was trying to commit suicide. So, so yeah, Soryu doesn't have an, a, a more screen time. On after episode 22, she doesn't have a major role. We are seeing. Her downfall, basically, and but that, if she did, she does have a major role in the first part of the end of Evangelion. Um, Mister says Aska the best girl. The old Aska better do. <laughs> oh, say I agree. Alvaro says uh, Mari makes no sense at all. Aska was destroyed. I already went in over Ask and over Mari, and I can see that feeling. I do, I do see it. Uh, you gave Kaji and Kaji an A rank, yes, Sigma. And the reason why I gave him an, an A is because his actions, his actions, what he did, uh, changed the world. Kaji has little screen time overall. But his action, his actions, creating Wiley, saving uh, the genetics of the world, uh, leaving Misato alive in charge of, of the Wonder and Wiley, uh, creating Credit and, and Village Tree, uh, the the Hex Pillars to, to preserve life. His actions were of supreme importance and if we ever get a time skip movie Kaji is without a doubt going to be one important character in that movie 
That's why. And, and if it is how I think it's going to be, if we get it, he's going to go from A to S. Because Kaji, and I said this before, in, uh, in Neon Genesis Evangelion, he's there. But he accomplishes nothing. Not even giving Misato the information. Misato was able, is able to do anything. So Kaji, not even the Japanese government, takes him seriously because they did nothing I, I also. So in comparison, he's even better than the original Kaji. That's the reason why Kaji is an A. Uh, Alvaro says Pen Pen is the best. <laughs> Pen Pen and the family of Pen Pen. Where was I? Oh, well, Asuka. And that's it. I, I have nothing else to say about Asuka. They haven't said before you want to see me talking about more about Asuka. I did a two-hour stream a month ago talking exclusively about Asuka. You can rewatch. You can rewatch it if you haven't. I also did a two-hour stream on Mari, so the same way. So either way. <laughs> um, Alvaro says, uh, well, Pen Pen, yes. Uh, o says, and finally, uh, my boy Shinji. Double the word says, how disgusting. <laughs> Sigma said, but that would suppose that Kaji is still alive. Do you think he emerged from the Sea of LCL after the third impact? You meet in Neon Genesis Evangelion? No. I don't think that he he returned. That's a question, right? What the people that turned to LCL that can return was people that was alive at the time that they turned to LCL? Or people that already died before could return? Kaji died before. Misato died before, but she turned into LCL after that. But that's a question for Neon Genesis Evangelion. In Revealed, uh, when Shinji puts Kaoru's name, uh, Kaji's name in, in Kaoru's Book of Life, it is hinted that he created a world in which the three of them are alive. Kaoru, Shin, uh, Kaoru, Aka, um, Kaoru, Kaji, and Misato. It is hinted. We don't see it. That is after Misato dies in Reveal. Uh, what else? Alvaro says, Penguins always are the best. I think Ano hates Misato. Why do you think Ano hates Misato? I think Ano hates everyone. <laughs> I don't think that he has a particular hate hatred towards one. <laughs> I think he hates all of them the same way. <laughs> uh, okay, Shinji. Shinji in the first movie, he behaves in line of what he was on the Genesis Evangelion. Now I want to be very clear on this. I don't like Shinji Neon Genesis Evangelion. I never liked it. I like early Shinji and I like some of his um, awakenings, but I didn't like Shinji on the end of Evangelion. Uh, I didn't like Shinji uh, after um, well, anything after Kaoru. And uh, after episode 18, which is episode uh, Introjection, which is the episode of, um, I think it's Introjection, uh, of uh, Unit 3. After after episode 18, I, uh, well, episode 19, I do like Shinji. But episode 20 onwards, I, I stopped liking Shinji at all. There's nothing I can rescue about Shinji. Uh, and I wanted to be very clear with that. It's not a secret. I said this before. Um, so in the first movie, he behaved in line of early Shinji. 
which is okay. I do like Eri Shinji. The second movie. For most of the movie, he behaved the same. But the final part of the reveal to second movie was magnificent. When he turns his red eyes, saves Ray, all oh, that is great. I don't think that previous Shinji would have made the same decision. And I did like that. I did like that. That was an improvement. Then Reveal Q came. <laughs> and Reveal Q. Oh boy. Uh, how do I explain this? I like how he started because he started like a fish out of the water. He didn't understand anything. And I sympathize with him. In Reveal Q, I sympathize with him because people talk to him as he knows everything that is happening across the movie. He has no idea. He has been in stasis for 14 years. How sh how how she know? He doesn't know. And everybody in the movie treats him as he knows what happened and what happening for 14 years is not been around. So how how could she he knows? He he has no idea. So I sympathize with the guy in the third movie. But after Kaoru dies, dude, it's just, oh my god. He turns into the worst version of Shinji. He, he's like first part of the end of Evangelion Shinji, that unbearable version of Shinji that I cannot stand. And, uh, man, <laughs> I do have problems with Shinji in the first act of 3 plus 1. And at the very end of uh, of Reveal Q, when she uh, when Asuka saves him, that Asuka kicks him and he doesn't move. Uh and uh Man, it, it's like the worst version of Shinji. So he we get the best version of Shinji and we get the worst version of Shinji, in my opinion. Now I see that not everybody thinks like me. Uh oh. Stop! Shut up. Sorry, that was my phone. <laughs> I didn't put on vibration. <clears throat> okay. Um where was I? Shinji. So I understand why people like Shinji. I mean, she, he's the main character. And uh, Evangelion, a big chunk of fans of Evangelion, they, they like Evangelion because they feel inter, uh, they, they feel represented by Shinji and Shinji's experience experiences and how society has treated him and how psychologically he evolves. So many people feel represented by Shinji and he has a strong fan base, even though that is a fan base that is very different from Askas or Kaorus, right? And I get it. So maybe that's the reason why I don't understand him completely, because I don't feel represented by him completely. I do understand some experiences that he has gone through that I also have gone through when I was a, a teenager. But the way that I confronted those, uh, some of those uh, problems that I had, it was very different, but that's a difference of personality. It's also a difference of the environment and the difference of the people surrounding you, right? So maybe I was a little bit more lucky than other people were. So I do respect everyone that likes Shinji because he's a primordial part of the story. Of course, he's the main character. And... Uh, and then I, I respect people that, that really, really feel identified by Shinji, represented by Shinji. Now, Shinji in 3 plus 1, after Reiki dies, it turns into the best representation of Shinji that I see. And that's the Shinji that I was hoping for in the end of Evangelion. I remember that when I watched the end of Evangelion for the first time. I was hoping to Shinji to become or turn into the Shinji that we got on 3 plus 1. I had to wait for 20 years, but I finally got it. <laughs> and I, it didn't disappoint. After Reiki died, Shinji 
had all the answers, right? He knew what things were going to work out. He knew what things didn't work when were going to work out. He became like an adult, and um, she uh, he started to make the right decisions without crying, without running away, confronting his problems. All of that, all of that, of course, has his meaning. He doesn't do that in the end of Evangelion. He does this in Reveal. So, so Shinji on 3 plus 1 is so strong. So strong. That it, it really feels like he needed to be on his lower point to highlight how good of a character he he is and became. I cannot say so many good things about Shinji if Shinji wouldn't be on her on his lower point before that. So that's the reason why I believe that Shinji is an S. Shinji is this Shinji, in my opinion, is a better Shinji than New Genesis Evangelion. He's a great Shinji. I like him really, really, really much in the end of the second film. And I loved him on the, on the second and third act of the final film. Very solid. Very strong. And a great way to, on any the story. Because this Shinji was was going to sacrifice himself to save all his friends, to save all the people surrounding him. There's no doubt in my mind that he is one of the, the, the few characters, four overall, that were better than their Neo Genesis Evangelion counterpart. I, I have to put their Kaji also, but. For me, Kaji still needs that movie. It still needs that story to reach to an S. But Shinji, without a doubt, without a doubt, is an S. <clears throat> Let's see what chat is saying. <clears throat> Uh, penguins, this is where I left. Uh, I like Shinji at the beginning. Alvaro says, <laughs> no, Sigma says, Ano is a silent member. Probably, probably. Uh, Alvaro Faria says, Two cruel deaths for Misato. I think they are heroic deaths. But I agree. I think, I think Misato would have been, I, I wanted Misato to survive this time. I want Misato to survive. But, well, she died again. <laughs> Maybe next time. Uh, Stigma says, I like Shinji at the beginning of New Genesis Evangelion at the end of New Genesis Evangelion. Alvaro says, I love Shinji on New Genesis Evangelion. Depression is something I can really relate with. Double the Worst says, Maybe Mario and Shikinami are just the ways that reveal, rewrite Shinji's story from you know, Evangelion. It's no longer the lowest of the low. Yeah, you can give that interpretation to Shikinami and, and Mario, right? Uh, I said it, I said this on my post 3 plus 1 discussion, spoilers discussion live stream that we had. Um, that uh, Shikinami, uh, the Asuka represents the past on Anno's life, and Mai represents the future, the new, the present. Uh, Shinji, uh, Sigma says, Shinji wishing, uh, Shinji is whining in the middle of New Genesis Evangelion was nauseating. I don't like Shinji because he's too relatable and he's, <laughs> he's just so weak, he hits, it hits home too much. O says, um, Shinji is like giving a student the responsibility to step up, but doesn't have the guts to do it. He's shocked and burdened. 
That's a good interpretation. Yeah. Alvaro says Shinji isn't a Shaolin Jump hero. No, it's not. It's uh, nothing. Nothing on Evangelion is Shaolin. At least in my opinion. Uh, o says he isn't the MC we want, but the MC we need. <laughs> Uh, Sigma says that uh, Shinji could have loved Asuka, he messed that up. He could have loved Misato, he messed that up. He could have saved the world many times over, he messed that up too. That's true, I mean, in the end of Evangelion. He stops instrumentality. After he started it, <laughs> everybody was turning into LCL because he started it. He choked Asuka to start instrumentality on Misato's kitchen. That's where he starts instrumentality. And then... And then he decides that it's not a good idea. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> okay. Alvaro says, in the real world, a 14 years old kid will act most like Shinji if you put him inside a big war of machine and say, go fight. That's true. That's true. And I make a strong emphasis on that on my videos when I talk about that. Right? The adults in the room say so. Adults that they never done that before because they are mostly engineers or scientists. They are not. They are not soldiers. None of them. Even if they use military ranks, they are not soldiers. Uh, Sigma says, when the world hangs in the balance, there is no room for teenage angst to affect performance. Gendo should have physically beat... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Beat it out of him as a wake-up call. And it's also one of the things uh, that, uh, you know, he, he doesn't have a good parenting, right? Shinji. My Greek friend says, love your channel, bro. Love to see you back. I, I forget your name and I cannot read that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm guessing that it's Greek. I recognize some Greek uh, letters. Sigma Male says, I agree with you about Kaji, but it's hard to appreciate his impact without unpacking it. You should do a video on Kaji's impact in Ninja and C7 Kaji. I did plan a long time ago to do a, a Kaji's video. Maybe I will revisit that. Uh, o says, I don't think Gendo can do that. The fact that Shinji felt neglected and Gendo lacked proper parental guidance. That's also true. That's also true. Great Phoenix says, kind of disagree with Midori on C tier. What's the reason? The reason on why Midori is in C tier is because she has a room in the, in the final move. Uh, that's it. <laughs> None of these characters have a role. And it hurts me to put that over here, but that's true. But Midori, Midori, for me, is a C minus because uh, of uh, the scene that she um, that she screams to Misato and Shinji. That because of Midori, Toji's sister did what she did. If Midori wouldn't step up like the way she did, probably, um, uh, oh, for, forgot her name. Jesus, <laughs> what's what's Toji's sister name? Forgot her name. Uh, Sakura, Sakura, Sakura shot Misato, and by shooting Misato, she she kind of changed the story. So her role, and by the way, Sakura is mentioned in Neon Genesis Evangelion. She's a character of Neon Genesis Evangelion. She doesn't appear. We don't see her on screen, but she does appear. Uh, she she exists on that, on that world. And the reason why Kaji decides to pilot Unit 3 is because uh, Nerf offers, her to put, uh, offers him to put her on Nerf Hospital. 
right? And in, in Rebuild, she appears on the second movie as a little girl getting, uh, getting off of the hospital, right? Toji hugging her. And uh, then on the third movie, she's uh, Shinji's physician, but her role in 3 plus 1 was important because she shot Misato. It's a wake up call for Misato, um, for Shinji, and it's a cycle, right? It's a cycle because Shinji almost killed her in the, sec in the first movie, and she almost killed Shinji on the fourth movie. So it's a cycle. And everything, and, and how important this character became, and the way that symbolically she was put in some scenes, right? Specifically, when Shinji returns to to the Wonder, and she's there, and all of that has its own own, own symbolism, and and is revisited revisiting Neon Genesis Evangelion. That's why Sakura is an A, right? Because for being a, a, a character that has short screen time and and it's a new character basically she had i mean she, her legacy is very strong you know? but to tell you the truth it's an a minus it's not the a of kaji or or misato it's an a minus this three is the weakest of these four characters with midori is that midori's action gave uh, sakura uh, the, uh, the the occasion to do what she did. That's the reason why Midori is a C. Because she had a role. None of these characters had a role. None of them. None of them. So C is basically, it had a role. <laughs> it had one role. F is, it was a waste of character. It's a character waste. <clears throat> Uh, by the way, I just finished watching Evangelion 3 plus 1 like five minutes ago. Uh, did you like it? Grief says Sakura. Yeah, Sakura. If I remember. Uh, thank you for the live stream, but I have to go to, to reasons. Hey, <laughs> hey. Thank you, bro. Thanks for being here. Oh, oh. have a great weekend. Yeah, we're almost done here. Um, there's a character that is missing, and that's Yui. And uh, Yui Kari in, trip in, 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 in Neon Genesis Evangelion. I mean, she's very important for both stories. For both stories. And the ending of both stories is Yui's scenario. Right? Take it however you want to take it. It is a fact. Because in both stories, she was happy with the ending. And she was the only one happy, if you compare it to, to Gendo and, and Sele. So, Yui, at least on, on Neon Genesis Evangelion, we get a backstory. In Reveal, we don't even get a line out of Yui. But I like Yui <coughs> on the white block suit. I think that design was cool. And I like her uh, saving Shinji. I like that. And I liked her on Ray's face on the second movie. I think it was brilliant. But still, uh, I don't know how to rate her. <laughs> what is what is Yui? It's just a name that they threw in Reveal. I, I'm not going to rate her because she has no role. I mean, she has a role. And that's uh, what drives the story together with Candy Cutty, But... She doesn't have a portrayal. So I'm gonna skip Yui for that. Pen Pen! Now this is Hikari Kid. Uh, I don't know why this character is doing here. It's, it, it's, I'm gonna put him with um, his mother. <laughs> so that'll be lonely. That's the only reason why I put him there. Uh, uh, it has an impact on, on Ray Q, right? And on Ray, that's the reason why Ray is carrying a, a, a doll at the end of the movie because he she remembers Ray Q having feelings to have a, to be a mother. Right. So it's a scene. Uh, on the original series, I didn't really 
care about Gendo, but I really like uh, what they did with him on Evangelion 3 plus 1. I, I feel like they really expanded and explained his character and motivation. I, I agree, that's why I put him on an S tier. <laughs> Alright, Pen Pen is an S. He's always an S. In all the lists, in the old one, in the new one, in the future ones, in the between ones, in the ones that has nothing to do with Evangelion. I, I, I mean, it's just, come on. It's Pen Pen. Pen Pen. Who hates Pen Pen? I never heard someone saying anything negative about Pen Pen, even though that we know that he killed Kaji in New Genesis Evangelion. That's a fact. We all know that. It's not a secret. Right? <laughs> so that's it. Those are all the characters of um, of Reveal. I'm trying to uh, go over them really quickly and make sure that I'm this is the definite list. Now that I talk about Sakura, I'm having double. Maybe I'm gonna downgrade Sakura one tier. Mm. Yeah. Sakura is a bit. It's a bit. Now that I'm comparing to these three, yeah. Very strong, it's a B plus, but it's not at the level of these three. <clears throat> it's more at the level of this. It's more at the level of Maya. Actually, let's put it together. There you go. That's the only second thought that I have. Maybe Sele will be a, Sele is a C plus. They are still important, but they they, they they play at Gendo's will in Reveal. They never they, they never impose anything to him in Reveal. It is hinted that during the time skip that happened, it is hinted, but it's it's just a, it's just a theory. We don't really know. And that's it. Am I missing one character? I think I got all of them. All right, so I'm going to explain, let's see, uh, what I'm going to do starting next week, a little bit before ending the stream. Uh, starting next week, Wait, uh, the burning color says, can you sort of compare reveal Kensuke to Mari? Well, uh, Kensuke is the paternal figure of Asuka, while it looks like Mari is the maternal figure of Asuka. Uh, but the thing is that I really don't like uh, a lot Kensuke, but his role was very important. That's, his, uh, that's why he's a big. But I, I really don't. I can't compare him to Mari because I don't like Kensuke's portrayal on Triple Plus One. To tell you the truth, but his impact in the world and in the story is definitely a B tier deserving. So, all right. So starting Monday, uh, I'm gonna begin live streams. So what I'm going to do is. Um, I cannot do Evangelion live stream every day. We can talk about Evangelion every day if you want. But <laughs> uh, for my state of mind, I don't think that that's the the right direction. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is that starting next week is that I'm going to do two live streams a week. I'm going to uh, the format of the live streams is going to be. Um, a Q and A period, in which we can interact and talk and, and whatever you want, and then I probably bring in a video game. I haven't decided that yet. I'm gonna decide that with my Discord. So if you haven't joined the Discord, please join and give your opinion. In which game should I play? So I was thinking of maybe playing something with you, with the audience, or a horror game that I hate 
and I don't feel comfortable playing horror games. So maybe that is going to be fun. I'm bringing the camera. So start, starting next stream, you will see my magnificent face. And that's going to be twice a week. Haven't decided the time yet. Probably one is going to be nighttime, my time, which is uh, the Easter standards time. And the other one is going to be up around noon. So people that are not in, in, in my time frame can see me as well and participate on the stream. And, uh, and then it's going to be two videos a week, at least, uh, and a, a video every Saturday. There's going to be the, the essay video that I usually do every week. Uh, and then there's going to be another video that is probably going to be either a review or it's going to be, uh, that's going to be between week. Uh, it's going to be either a review or it's going to be, uh, um, and, and, uh, me analyzing anime news or something like that, an article that is relevant to the channel, that is relevant to the content that I do. And, uh, and, and that's like one of the things that I'm changing. And depending on how it goes, I may introduce a third live stream a week. So, yeah, and I'm going to start covering Cowboy Vivo because we are about two weeks away. I, I know that many people in my audience like Cowboy Vivo. They are as contemporary as I am, <laughs> the same age. Cowboy Vivo is really important. And Cowboy Vivo Netflix uh, premieres on the 17th. So my next video is going to be a Cowboy Vivo video regarding that. And starting Monday, Monday I will announce on Discord later. And on Sunday on my community post on YouTube, how the, the streams are going to be and, and what I'm going to do. So you can join and uh, hang out if you want, if you have the time. All right. And of course, we can talk about Evangelion all you want, if that's what you want to do. I'm not going to say no. And there's always going to be Evangelion content on my channel. The, the purpose of this live stream was going to be this, what I did, it took me four hours. <laughs> it was going to be uh, one hour. And then I um, was going to talk about the future of the channel for the next hour. But instead, I spent four hours talking about <laughs> the characters of Reveal. Uh, and I wanted, so I'm going to change the name of this live stream to Reveal character tears, or maybe I'm going to do a, a video on it instead of a, a live stream. I will download it and publish it as a video. So if you see a video on the tier as a tier, it's going to be the same live stream. So all of you that have been here and are watching this live stream right now, you don't have to watch it again if you don't want. If I do that, um, we'll see. All right. So uh, live stream on Mondays. I think that the second live stream, I'm going to put it on Thursdays. So on Mondays, it's going to be daytime, my time, and on Thursday, nighttime. Uh, and maybe I will squeeze one in on the weekend. So the people that misses or cannot because they are either studying or they are working at the time that I'm streaming, they can participate during the weekends. I might do that if I have the time. There's going to be an essay video a week. The program I'm going to publish on Saturdays. As always, I have to, done in the past. Even though that in my Gendo video, I published it on a Tuesday, but it's because that video I, uh, it was delayed. I should have posted it on Saturday, but, you know, YouTube happened. <laughs> and, and I had to publish it on, on Tuesday. And that's it. And so Monday and Thursday is going to be live streamed. Wednesday, there's going to be a video that is either going to be a review video. Or there's going to be a, an article. Uh, it's going to be a short video on Image News. So I haven't figured out yet. But for sure, on Wednesday, there's going to be a video. And then my essay video. Then the next essay video is going to be a couple of video. It's going to be published on Saturday. All right, guys. So you have, if you have anything to say, uh, like the video, this live stream. Like it, like it, like it, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and join the Discord. The link, the link, invitation, is in the description section. That's the best way to 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 communicate with me, twenty four hours a day, if you want. And that's it. I'm gonna let you all go. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Enjoy it with uh, your family, friends, by yourself. <laughs> And I'll see you all next week.
All right. Bye, guys.